in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you're welcome to another spirit filled message on fifty centric message if you're new to this channel I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted unto you and then God is going to visit you your way thank you for watching be blessed lifted be the name of the Lord let's lift our hands and bless his name Jesus we exalt you you are mighty you are holy, you are gracious, we bless you. Lift your hands inside and outside and let's bless his name. Jebra to kasuda balika faria katos. Jende brendo gas kalabratia da osikete. Jekete kos. Mande kata para katos azigadia na malato sevriash. Lige brens kata parianda gabros. Jekete kos kalabria takata la brianda sipe de gete bele de bush. Lord, we bless you. We bless you. We bless you for your faithfulness. We bless you for the testimonies. For your outreach hand in the midst of your people, we thank you. For blessings, for revelation, for confidence, for understanding. For the anointing, for the presence of the Holy Spirit, we thank you. Lega barato si adamala ko shabra diska la bradisi. Ala brandi kaske British kala brosa la diha sabado si adabato si. Bless you. You deserve my worship. You deserve my praise. You deserve my worship. You deserve my praise. You deserve my all. Lipa kaso da baruta sela bariondo skalabriasha. From everlasting to everlasting, we will praise you. I will praise you. You have proven yourself faithful again and again, and I thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Ask the Lord to visit you tonight. Please, inside, outside, wherever you are, online, open your mouth and cry. Lord, I cry for revelation. I cry for revelation. Concentrate, lift your voice, and in desperation, cry.
Jesus. We declare tonight that our hearts are open because we believe in your power to save, in your power to heal, your power to deliver, your power to transform, your power to open up a new dimension. Lord, we thank you. We thank you. We decree and declare tonight that it is an extraordinary meeting in your presence. We thank you for your power. We thank you for light. Thank you for illumination. Thank you for understanding. We receive the spirit of revelation. Grant us access to the mysteries of the kingdom. Lord, let there be a performance. Let there be a performance. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Good evening, everybody. God bless you. Please be seated. Turn to someone by your left and right and um, appreciate them. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's amazing. I kept thinking about the faithfulness of God. This is November and God has proven again that he's reliable. Hallelujah. That he can be trusted. If you can trust a man that is mundane and can change in a moment, I can like you today and hate you tomorrow. And if you ask me why, I will say it's my choice. Is that true? I can hate you tomorrow and like you the next tomorrow. When you put your arm, your strength on men, it is so unreliable. The best of any man can change overnight. I can promise to give you more and say I can't remember. And just because my memory failed me, you will be punished. But the Bible says this word has been tried seven times. Listen carefully. It's not just a book that makes people spiritual. It's more than that. This is a compendium of the mind of Christ. Listen carefully. The Bible is a compendium of the ways of God. This is the ancient secret of an unbeatable life, the ancient secret behind strange results. Those who can be foolish enough, foolish enough, childlike enough. Brothers and sisters, this is the book that turns a poor man into levels of stupendous wealth. This is the book that turns a sinner and makes he a man of God out of him. Listen to me. This is the book that turns a man who cannot pay a rent of 10,000 to now own an estate. This is a book that can make a confused young man not knowing what to do with his life to become one who will govern kings and nations. This book has led many. We are not the first to hold it. There are many ancient hands that held this book. They were stupid enough to read everything there. And they believed God. They believed him. That's the point. It's not just reading it. They saw it. And they believed. And God performed wonders in and through their life. Today we have come in the midst of history. We're not starting anything new. We just have followed them who through faith and patience. When they taught us, they taught us to trust the word. And so we believe the word. Listen, it may not yet look like everything is appearing, but let me tell you the truth. Your destiny is too small to make the word of God fail for the first time. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. God used this word to humble the pride of wicked kings who were, their confidence were built upon divinations that had been tried for a long time. Yet the word of God brought them to their knees. If I trust any other thing in life and I do not trust the word of God, I'm a foolish man. Praise the Lord. This is the secret. I have a name that I call the Bible. I don't call it the Bible. It is my roadmap to accessing the mysteries of the kingdom. I study the Bible like an archaeologist, like someone who has lost a treasure and is looking for it. I keep saying it that the secret to the future is in the past. 
when you can go behind the ancient part is not the part of a nomination the ancient part is a part where you open what did jacob see what did the psalmist see and if the spirit of revelation opens your eyes to see it ah brothers and sisters you create your own reality and walk in it as if satan does not exist this is what makes those who don't understand these mysteries they think that you know when men of god talk like this they are arrogant your reality is based on what your eyes have seen you must believe this your reality is based on what your eyes have seen it is important for you to understand please let me have your attention it is very important there is nothing that is built by magic there is nothing that is built by gimmicks this is it your spirit opens to me the treasures of your word and i will forever see Your spirit opens to me the treasures of your word, and I will forever sing your praise. I will sing, I will sing of the wonders of your word. I will sing out for joy. I will sing of the wonders of your word, and I will forever sing. I will sing, I will sing of the wonders of your word, I will sing out for joy. I will sing of the wonders of your words, and I will forever Listen, if I ask you to stand up now and I tell you what is the basis of your confidence, somebody will say, my father is coming out for election, and some person in presidency promised him that this turn is his turn to eat. That is complete nonsense. It's human beings that vote somebody in and out and they can change their minds overnight. Another person will say his brother is the manager of XYZ and because he's sitting on money he will bless him. Hear what the Bible says. He says for by the arm of flesh. Did you hear that? By the arm of flesh shall no man prevail no man prevail do you know i have become addicted to this book it's not because i'm a preacher jesus gave a parable i did not understand for many years he said the kingdom is like a man who is looking for a treasure the treasure is missing and then he lights a candle and goes around the room the treasure is not the word the treasure is the result you are looking for but he tells you how to look for it you light the candle you carry an empty candle you you keep roaming around an empty candle is a bible you brought from zondervan and you drop that's an empty candle but when the illumination of the spirit is upon it you carry it and move around when you find it it comes life to you then you communicate a dimension of results that will dumbfound principalities and powers let me tell you don't ever doubt a man whose confidence is based on something he has caught in the word you will be angry forever you will dream forever nah. anything that is not a derivative of the word i don't trust it because i don't have control over it the bible says he upholds all things that includes my destiny he upholds all things by the word of his power we need to be a confident people. Listen, not just believers, confident people. A depth of conviction and persuasion that is brought about by this. The illumination of the spirit upon this word. So you search for it. 
cramming scriptures is not just it's not the key to understand the word that's not just how it works many of us have memory of scripture which is not bad in itself except for the fact that it has no ability to empower you just like that it's like carrying granite seed and chucking it in your pocket do you have a harvest will it grow sir The word is the seed. That's what Jesus said. The soil is your heart. The rain is the Holy Spirit. You can plant a seed and dry season will kill it into nothing. The seed is not wrong, but the anointing. You see that? The rain that comes upon the seed. Brothers and sisters, please, I want you to pay attention. For every time God gives us the privilege to converge like this, it is not the advancement of a man's agenda. It is the progression of your accessing the mysteries that will cause you to command dominion. Let me tell you something. There is a dimension of light that we are going to project to the world that will dumbfound principalities and powers. Yes. A dimension of light. Young people will rise up with a level of strange prosperity that people will say, no, no, no. Are these guys scammers? Are they fraudsters? We say, no, we found an ancient secret that can allow men to be blessed and focus on their assignment. You see that? You will rise with a strange level of the anointing that will make even herbalists to wonder and say, I'm a herbalist, but this is strange. It will happen. I am an archaeologist. I search it. I don't read the Bible to finish it. I read the Bible to find <laughs> what I'm looking for. And sometimes you can find one verse and stay there. That's where the goal is. So if you are, all you are doing is just to finish, I read Psalms 5 today. You came close to the gold mine and carelessness took you away. And you go somewhere. It is scripture. But it's not the word of God. The word of God is that part of scripture that gives you life. <laughs> so many people brag religiously. I started studying the Bible by January. And now I'm in Revelations 22. Call the person and say, how many treasures did you find? Even one. One. The only thing they find is an accolade that I search the scripture. But someone will come with an honest heart and open one scripture. You heard what that gentleman said? He used the way, the truth, the life. Alone. Imagine what else we can find. I've shared with you my vision years ago when I was caught up in the spirit and I saw a big gate. And that gate was made of small, small doors. You know, they were opening and closing and light was emitting from every one of them. And then I kept looking and I noticed it was zoomed to me and I saw scripture written on every door. And the doors were opening and closing and I was asking the Lord, what is the meaning of this? And the Lord said, every time you catch a revelation, the light component, that is the performer of that revelation. Anything you claim you have caught and you cannot bring it to the scene is a lie. You have not gotten it yet. Please pray and say, Lord, by your mercy, open my eyes today. This kind of prayer, you must add the mercy of God in it. Because what else will you say? By what? Lord, I cry by your mercy. Open my eyes to see. You have spoken great things, but until my eyes see it, there is no possession. It says, as far as your eyes can see, are we praying? Open my eyes. Show me where the anointing for the next level is. Open my eyes. Show me where the key to my lifting is. Open my eyes. Show me where the river is in the desert. Open my eyes. Oh God, many people will be hearing many things, but show me my own. And the word of the Lord came. And the word of the Lord came. The word of the Lord has always been around. The word of the Lord came. Let my word come.
the word of the Lord came. Hallelujah. Listen, let me teach you something about the mercy of God. Every time you want to access the spirit of revelation, ask the Lord to release it by his mercy. There is no known formula I know for receiving the spirit of revelation. It is by the mercy and the grace of God that the eyes of a man be open. In scripture, the eyes of a man was open when he said, Thou son of David, have He didn't say, thou son of David, don't pass me by. He would have remained there crying till Jesus. That was the last time Jesus would pass Jericho. But I saw a relationship between the mercy of God and the spirit of revelation. Is thou son of David, will I remain blind like this forever? Have. He never said, I want to walk. The walking is a subset of the mercy when illumination come. Oh, I want to see. I want. Mm -mm. Thou son of David, have mercy. It's a language God cannot pass by. No matter what you know to do at once, God hears mercy. He remembers the blood and he turns. What should I do for you? You didn't call me correctly. Oh. I hope you know. Yes, that's why I said mercy. I don't even know your name. I said son of David. Whether you are carpenter or Jesus, I added mercy to my confusion. Have mercy on me. That's how you can see someone who will be bragging around. I went to theological school and teaching nonsense and jargons and someone will sit down and say lord i came from the village there was no light in our community but lord i know that i've been seeing myself in dreams ministering and raising the, the dead and watches can you open my eyes by your mercy and the spirit of revelation comes boom one scripture he may not be able to quote everything one scripture and with that scripture you will do exploits I like you to prepare your spirit because what I want to share with you tonight will bless you in no small way. People come to the house of God for many years, Jimmy, and you find out that they are not growing. How do you grow? There are two indices for growth. It's no confusion. Number one is the degree to which you are conforming experientially to the image of Christ. Number two, your comprehension of the mysteries of the kingdom if you are not understanding the precepts of the kingdom you are not growing sir whether they ordain you pastor apostle deacon once you are not accessing the midst of the kingdom you are not growing it's as simple as that because that's how we reign in this kingdom on the strength of mysteries what do you know now that took away fear from you the fear you had in january what entered you that can give you confidence to look at it and say, no way, not again. If your fear of January is still your fear of today, you made the word of God unfruitful in your life. Someone entered this year wondering, and right now the person is just laughing at the same situation. As I say, no, no, no. That, one, that, was, that was last year's challenge. You won't talk that nonsense with me again. Because you know what to do. Not bold face for nothing. For Jesus himself knew what to do. My assignment in this ministry is that by the privilege of God's election and grace, I will continue to show you what to do. The result you desire versus the mystery that connects it. That's my assignment. To continue to show you that the kingdom is a compendium of possibilities, but accessing them are predicated upon your knowledge of the mystery allocated for that result. Not the mystery available. The mystery that is allocated. You want to be blessed. Anything in the Bible will not bless you anyway. You have to find the one that is allocated for you. You don't put rice in a pot. And when it boils, you lift it up and see beans. You will see food, but not beans. If it's beans you want to cook, you better find out, one, where to get beans, two, how to cook it. Correct? So anything in the kingdom is not what you are looking for. There are people who are blessed financially, 
but this sickness will kill you. You go to the hospital and treat it, it will refuse to come. Brothers and sisters, there is an allocation. You have to find out. There are pastors who are so anointed, they can raise the dead, but you, they will never have up to 30 members. There is a mystery that keeps men. People are not stupid to just come and sit down, sit outside, endure all kinds of things. No, sir. My assignment is that by the agency of the Spirit that I communicate to you the mysteries, when you gather them together like this, it's like a chain that connects you and heaven. When you move in life, the moment a challenge comes, you smile because you understand the key to address it. Fear and ignorance and pain is a revelation of your bankruptcy of the understanding of the mystery that is tied to a result you are looking for. There are things I used to fear years ago. I don't fear them again. I didn't cast out the spirit of fear. Understanding took me out of that realm. You see that? Yes. So please, I want us to focus. When you see us cry for the spirit of understanding, this thing is not just, even this anointing, because you see many people, especially ministers, this is what we are all looking for. Anointing. Anointing is not just a generic oil that comes on your head. This anointing you see has dynamics. It doesn't just work anyhow. How many people are you going to lay hands on on your life? Won't it kill you? There is a system. There are many means of transportation. There is bicycle. There is jet. If you want to arrive Lagos with a bicycle, you may die before you arrive there. That's how the dispensing of the anointing is. You will meet people. There are it, knowing the vehicle is not just enough. You must understand the system of helping it reach people. There's somebody seated outside, another overflow. There's somebody online in another nation. How do you, if all you know is just to lay hands on people, how do you bless those who are far? Please pray before I start teaching in one minute and say, Lord, change my level. Insist, please pray. Change my level. Paul said, I went up by revelation. Show me something. Lord, where I am is a revelation of my limited knowledge. I take responsibility and I admit, open my eyes. Satan can't be that powerful. There's something I am not seeing. Lord, I've been falling under the anointing, but that anointing has not healed one sick body. There is something I'm not getting. I have been sowing seeds, but a harvest has not been coming. What is blocking it? What more do I need to know? Hallelujah. Please sit down. <laughs> mm. The Bible says, when you read Ephesians chapter 4, verse 18, it says, having their understanding darkened. Paul is teaching here. And then he says, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them. Ignorance alienates a man from the life of God. The experience of that Zoe life. Are we together now? That their understanding is darkened. That's the issue. Then it says that as a result of that darkened understanding, they are being alienated from the experience of the kingdom. So they may have semblance of what should be, but never enter into the experience of it. Most people are not in ignorance of what their life should be. They know what they should become. But the power to make it happen, that is a derivative of light. You know you should be more anointed than now. You know you should be more prosperous. But what is the limitation? It says, haven't their understanding darkened? And then alienated from the life of God on the strength of the ignorance that is in them. I came angry in my spirit. Oh. We'll, be, we'll pray. I trust God for grace. 
so that we'll finish fast and just have some few minutes to pray. First Peter 5.10 Just one scripture. There is a level of rest I began to perceive in my spirit that many of us were ordained by God to enter this year that we have not entered. And my assignment is to insist that these two months left we must force something to happen. The Bible says, but the God of all grace, listen, who had called us into eternal glory by Jesus Christ, after you have suffered, the word suffered there is endured, endured with certain things a while, what will he do? Make you perfect, uh-huh, establish you, uh-huh, strengthen you, uh-huh, settle you, give you stability. These four things must happen to someone's life between this November and December. Listen, I really want you to believe me because believers are the ones who are possessors. Are we together? It says after you have, end, you have put up with certain things for a while, put up with poverty for a while, put up with pain for a while, put up with disappointment. Listen, it can't be forever. No, sir. A book has many pages. When you stay on one page forever, it's a curse. After you have suffered a while, the Bible says weeping and just for a night. If you cry to the next morning, cry in the afternoon, cry till another night, that crying has violated God's ordinances. He allows people to only weep in the night. After you have suffered for a while, make you perfect, establish you, establish you, then he says, strengthen you. All kinds of might, financial might, intellectual might. Then he says, settle you. Settle you. You are unmovable. You have gotten to a level where you are not afraid. Uh -uh. The Lord declared that this is a year of triumph. I believe this. So when God gave me this scripture, it entered my spirit. And the Lord began to communicate to me and say, son, you have not hit my expectation for the year. This triumph, there is, there is something, there is... There is a dimension of testimony that is not yet rampant. Here and there, like rain, people are getting it. But it is in a ministry of thousands of people. If only four people testify, as a man of God not failed? Four over thousands is zero. Round it up is zero. So there is a dimension. The services that remain for this year will be very strangely prophetic services. I tell you, there are services meant at pushing people to force the reality of this world. Because brothers and sisters, God cannot lie. God cannot lie. God cannot lie. God cannot lie. So the Lord showed me this scripture and it really, really blessed me. Tonight I'm going to teach very briefly on the mystery of divine intervention. The mystery of divine intervention. What is the spiritual secret behind calling God in the time of trouble and let him show up and bail you out? What is the system in the kingdom that has been built where men, when you need the help of God, when your life is faced with an emergency and you need to call heaven, Brothers and sisters, there are emergencies in our lives that require access to this system. Hmm. The mystery of divine intervention. The Bible is full of near, near shame experiences where God got up, showed up for individuals, showed up for the nation of Israel. God turned the lives of people around overnight let me show you one scripture you will want to know second peter chapter 2 verse 9 learn this scripture add it to your spiritual arsenals you will need it i guarantee you second peter chapter 2 verse 9 i want us to run uh, tonight read it with me please one two read the lord knoweth how to deliver the godly from temptation or oppression or calamities and to reserve the unjust 
unto the day the Lord knows how to exchange experiences that he looks as child and says for my name say come promise that he looks at this person who calls upon his name and watches that this guy is getting into trouble he says God knows how to exchange people and carry this person out and drop the wicked for the punishment that is allocated for the righteous is called intervention there is a system in God listen please there is a system in God where God can plug men out of the fire remember the story of the three Hebrew boys the Bible says they found the furnace seven times that those who threw them inside the furnace listen they threw them inside the furnace and the heat killed them and when four of them were inside the king was not a believer but the king had had strange encounters and he saw a face in that fire he had seen in his dream he said I, I look and I see four people and the appearance of the fourth is like the Son of God and the Bible says they came out they could not even smell fire what of Daniel that was thrown in the den of the lions because of his prayer life the Bible says the lions were at peace with him and when he came out and they threw those other fellows the lions just devoured them brothers and sisters there is a mystery there is a hidden code of operation allocated to the saints in light to help them deliver them out of all the troubles and the vicissitudes that Satan puts because you see your destiny is a function of many things and sadly it includes the lives of others and that also includes their carelessness there are times you will get into things you necessarily did not cause but you will suffer the consequence if you don't know how to exempt yourself this is like an extension of the mystery of exemption the mystery of divine intervention where men called upon God and God showed up and turned the lives of nations around turned the lives of individuals around there is a way you call upon God for your personal prayer life but brothers and sisters there is a way you call upon God to intervene on a matter that if he does not intervene sometimes it may be that you are finished There was a time death was killing people in Israel. Killing people. There was a way they called on God. Divine intervention is real. All through scripture, we see that God is able to arise. Psalms 102 verse 13. It says, thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time. In God's calendar, there is a time, oh, there is a time to favor Joshua Selman. There is a time to lift me. And you see, the Bible says in Amos chapter 3 verse 9, that God does not do anything but to reveal his secret to his servants, the prophets. So when God is about to do something in a territory, he captures his thoughts in words, in, in similitudes, in, in all kinds of expressions, communicates it to his servants to deliver to the people so that their faith will be connected to what he wants to do in the season. And God has declared that it's a season of triumph. I believe God it's not just a cliche that a man of God comes to move ministry forward no sir thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time the time to favor her the time to lift her the time to honor her for God's sake the time to wipe her tears the time for Zion to say I am also the bride of a good man he says the time has come thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her yea the set time is come many people want intervention intervention is the supernatural is a supernatural visitation over a man's situation that brings a radical transformation supernatural visitation of God supernatural visitation of God all of a sudden God steps in overnight and changes a man's situation overnight 
He says, have you heard this proverb that a city was born in one day? He said, but as soon as Zion travails, in one day she shall put forth a son. Why do we need divine intervention? Because of our imperfection as human beings. The first reason that necessitates divine intervention is that we are inaccurate as human beings. Our inaccuracy as human beings, inaccuracy of understanding and obeying the precepts of God will necessitate God to create that provision. Are we together? If a young man drinks and smokes and gets to a point where he now repents, when his liver is quartered to die, he has repented, but the liver is still going to kill him. That gentleman doesn't just need a healing, he needs a divine intervention. When somebody repents in the prison and is supposed to say 80 years and he went there at 40, you see that he's going to die in the prison? He needs divine intervention. He's born again, but he's in the prison. Our families are in desperate need for divine intervention. Is that true? Hmm. Father not working, mother not working, 13 children, 10 of them not working. All of them graduates. Haba. There is need for a strange intervention. How about human agents that will sit on your destiny and vow and say for as long as we are here, we fraternize with darkness to jeopardize your confidence about God. I wish there was no such reality. But brothers and sisters, the Bible did not leave us in the dark as to the wickedness that lies in our world. I was talking with a young man on phone who sent me a text. I think they worship one kind of idol and the father has been calling him. I should come back. There's something he's supposed to do. The guy said he's not coming back. After graduating from school, they're asking you to come. They will buff you, put something on your head like a cap and one kind of ritual like this. After that, they'll say you can go. The guy said he's not coming. And the man told him that that thing, whatever it is, will pursue him and look for him, his blood father, the boy was speaking to me, and I said, let me tell you my brother, if you go there, and carry yourself, and go, and sit down under that, whatever it is, and they bath you with the blood of an animal, and do those rituals, uh -uh. God is able, rather than wasting your time, paying transport, use the money, and buy a book that reveals a mystery, that you, you keep the enemy at bay, because what that shrine is trying to prevent him from, will look for him, if he doesn't have the mystery allocated, he can make bold face and say, I won't go, but you will soon find out that it will happen to him. First child, dull. Second child, very dull. Third child, very dull. And the person says, I'm brilliant. My wife is brilliant. And he sees that thing in a dream. He says, I, I told you, 10 years ago, you would have rescued your children. See, don't reject darkness without having the light component. Don't just say, I reject darkness. Eh, every shine in my village, God forbid. It's a joke. You must have the light component. Otherwise, I tell you to haunt you and tear you into pieces. There are forces of darkness. We need divine intervention because of our inaccuracy. We need the intervention because, listen, the pace at which darkness attempts to destroy us versus our level of spiritual growth will require divine intervention at some point. Now, look at me. Listen, let me tell you something. In the next 10 years, there are things that I will know then that I don't know now. But Satan is plotting all kinds of schemes over my life based on the knowledge I need to know 10 years to come. I need intervention by the mercy of God to give me victory before I enter that level of understanding. If my victory is purely left to my level of understanding alone, it means that I will be punished on many grounds before I come into that knowledge. You need divine intervention. Is God speaking to someone here? Hmm. Let me tell you this. I am very outspoken about results. 
I'm not a man of God that will lie to you and say results don't matter. It's a lie. It's a lie. If results don't matter, why do you go to work? Why do you wait for salary at the end of the month? Is that true? Results matter to God, matter to the devil, matters to everybody on earth. Whether we agree or not. Results are consolations to your Christian experience. Whilst it is true that we do not serve God just for results. But brothers and sisters, let me tell you. Even Jesus saw a fig tree that was receiving nourishment from the principle he programmed in the earth. And was not yielding the result. He caused it in annoyance. So God wants us to bear fruit. But there are keys that we must understand. Please look up. There are many of us here. And there are many of our family members here. Had they known that there is a mystery that controls divine intervention, many tragedies we now weep over would not have happened. Listen carefully. Are we together now? Yes. Somebody looked at you and vowed and said, Pastor Alpha, I will destroy you. You said, no problem, you wouldn't destroy me, but you did not understand the component, the revelation component, and eventually it caught up with you. I prayed for a lady. She probably may be following now online. Married, loved her husband. All of a sudden, the husband just changed and became a, a very, very funny man. Doesn't even stay in the same room with her and all of that. And she, she could not take it again and she called me. You know, I prayed with that lady and just this morning she sent me a text. She said she woke up in the morning and just saw her husband sitting by her bed. Something brought him. Listen, listen. This is what I, you see, men are slaves to the mysteries that control them. You can program things like a bomb in the spirit and just go and watch it. The same way I can put a bomb and I program blow by 8 o'clock and then I just move somewhere and I'm laughing at everybody around here because it must blow. Except another agency superimposes it. This is how you can program results in the realm of the spirit and watch like a movie as they unfold in the earth realm using things you call circumstances coincidences but you know that they are intentional results that were programmed by mysteries this is how i want your life to be that you can sit down and program growth program speed program breakthrough and watch everything like a movie and day after day you watch someone get up and say sorry elijah I, I, I hope this is a new keyboard I bought for you. And you laugh. Something was programmed. Your house that has been 10 years refused to be completed. You program something by understanding. And someone comes to say, ah, Sam, I don't know. Do you mind me complete this house? And you will say yes because it was intentionally done. You don't say, I'm surprised you are coming. I'm not surprised. You were called. That, are we together? That's why when people die in the villages, the Habalis don't cry. Have you ever seen them crying? No. Something they programmed. They programmed somebody from London and tell him where to come and die. When he dies, other people are crying and the guy says, well, it's just to let you know that we are not children. You can program things. From the foundations of the earth, some things were programmed. And the intelligence of the father, he watched everything unfold through redemption. No power could stop it. Satan tried. He entered. He went when Jesus was fasting. Now came and entered Peter. Now came and entered. When he entered Judas, I'm sure Satan thought he was smart. Paul was watching it like a movie and saying, yeah, yeah, had they known this? So this was the caricature that God was making out of Satan. He thought he was smart, but he was, God was using him as a slave. Because you see, when you kill a man, according to scripture, his blood will haunt you. So God made sure it was Satan that killed Jesus. Go and read your Bible. Blood is a mystery. It remains on the head of the killer forever. Paul was watching this. Whether he was in a hole, in a cave, in prison, I don't know. But Paul was saying, ah, ah. Satan, couldn't you see? Jesus casted you out of Peter and left you in Judas. You didn't ask why. You just continued until you became a fool. 
That's the reason why when we invoke the blood, something really happens. It happens to whoever was the killer. When Cain killed Abel, blood cried against him. Cried against him. <laughs> I need divine intervention. You need divine intervention. Samaria needed divine intervention. Please sit down. They got to a point, scripture says, come, that they got to a point where women, can you imagine brothers and sisters, that you get to a point where you are not just eating goats, you are not just eating clothes. Women, you have your child. I'm telling you, there is a strange grace this year for fruitfulness and miracles in this ministry. We have seen very dramatic manifestations and, and all of that. There are mothers all around with their children moving right and center. Now imagine Pastor Alphas, that little baby. Imagine Annie holding this her child and saying, look, there is so much poverty. Pastor Alpha travels somewhere to go and look for food. And she liasses with a Jimmy's wife. Two of them, they carry Jael and carry David. And two of them stand and agree. And they say, we are eating Jael this night. You eat it. What sort of hunger makes you eat a whole human being? Now watch this. Then the Bible says they ate the first one. Then the next day, it was the turn to eat the other one. And the mother said, no. And the woman said, no, you ate my child. Listen, while that confusion was happening, the king started passing and they went. They said, king, you can't leave us like this. And when all of that happened, the king said, look for Elisha for me. Look for Elisha for me because he had that Elijah program farming. He said, I'm sure Elisha has a hand in this trouble. Go and look for this. This, this guy was mentored by the troublemaker of Israel. Go and look for Elisha. Watch this. While all of this suffering was happening, the Bible says Elisha and the sons of the prophet were, he didn't say they were hungry. When he saw the king coming, he said, this son of a murderer wants to now come and kill me. Oh, yeah, you push, you stop him. And because of that, it's okay now. It's called my attention. Let me casually do something about what is killing a nation. By this time, Kabakoto Sakataya. By this time, tomorrow. By this time, tomorrow. Listen, it didn't tell you how it will happen. If you understand the superiority of the realm of the spirit, you will never ask how results manifest. You see, let me tell you something. When people argue and say, how did this thing happen? They are not wise. The raw materials that create the earth are resident within the realm of the spirit. He said, by this time tomorrow, by this time, I'm hurrying up. I would have given you scriptures, but I really want us to pray. That by this time tomorrow, they call, they, please help them. This will cause this and that. And then a foolish man, like many doubters that insult men of God, he said, what are you saying? I, I mean, I'm the minister of this and that. I read this and that. Even if the windows, AJ, he knew that much that heaven had a window. With what did they build the window? He never asked. If God will open the window, will these things be? And the prophet said me, you will see it all. But they will kill you in front of that breakthrough. Then look at how the miracle happened. The prophecy had been programmed in the spirit. Now it is up to the word. This is where the wisdom of God starts. It starts searching for scenarios in the earth that can bring what is in the spirit to manifest. Are you seeing how prophecy comes to pass? Watch this. Look at this. Let me teach you something. Watch this. Look at me and learn. If I prophesy to you, Emeka, and say by tomorrow, if it is really by the Spirit, I say by tomorrow, money is coming to your account. I have placed that word in the Spirit. Hold on. The word manifests by the wisdom of the Spirit. Let me tell you what the wisdom of the Spirit is. It will start searching the earth to look for the scenario on earth that is capable of bringing that word down. Then connect it to the individual. Listen. The wisdom of God will move to a rich man. 
If it's not open, it will move to somebody who God had instructed to. So if it will keep moving like that, that's how the anointing got to Mary to be the mother of Jesus. The Bible never said the name of the mother of Jesus will be Mary. The prophecy started searching for a virgin. When he found one and she said, I'm available, he brought her out. Listen, there are too many activities on earth that can mirror what is happening in the heavens for God to be bankrupt in terms of manifestation. When God says, I want to bless you, Koi is already speaking to millions of people to sow. It's just that he has not told them who to sow. The wisdom of God can just connect one of them. You see how prophecy works. I'm helping your faith so that when God says, I will do this, you now sit with your limited mind and say, I only know Uncle A and B. And I already know A promise you will never see me. And God is saying, no, we are talking about the wisdom of the creator. Look at what happened. Four lepers. Everybody say four lepers. Four lepers were sitting quietly. And the wisdom of God, the spirit of wisdom, because the word of God must come to pass. The man of God had declared it. And the, the anointing came on the lepers. They thought they were just tired. But they didn't know that at that point, they were under the influence of a man of God. And the word started programming that result. They say, why sit here till we die? Even that talk was by the spirit. They thought they were gisting. And they said, look, let's just get up and go to the camp of our enemies. And tell them, kill us, but let's eat first. The Bible says the moment they began to go, God changed their people. They began to hear the sounds of chariots. And all of them, listen, were they not warriors? Is it not fight they fought to get those things? Couldn't they fight again? When God wants to bless you, he will mumu your enemy in a way that you will not even know how things happen. I know I should not graduate, but there is a mystery that can be programmed. A man is watching your result. 37 over 50. You need 50. Something comes on him and he, and he does not even know. Listen, listen. People, some people hear the testimony of some of our some of the people who wrote jam here that jam changes from 100 and something to two and you hear them talking nonsense talking stupid things and saying how can it happen and i said look, look at this foolishness how does a boil come out of your stomach where did the mass accumulate from that projected out did any part of your body reduce for it to come out did he ask where it came from then when it disappears, you say, where did it go to? You see how we think? Son of man, can these bones live again? Immediately, oh, not after 10 years, not gradually. Can these bones live again? He said, God, I've seen many miracles, but I've not seen this type. That a dry bone. It's not like a dead human being. I believe in raising the dead, but dry bones. And he said, okay, I want to show you something. That when I show up, I compress time and make things happen. And he said, prophesy. Prophesy. And things began to shift. Listen, it is too late when mysteries have been programmed in the spirit. Take it from me. The moment a man programs something in the spirit, you better find a way of countering it in the spirit. Otherwise, it must manifest. <laughs> this is what Habalists do. They conjure things. They conjure spirit. And then they tell the person, go, it is done. At the point they said, go, it is done. He didn't feel anything. Oh, go. We shall be, we put your husband in a bottle and you saw it. Go, it is done. The woman will go home and still see her arrogant husband come back and she'll be laughing. You're already in a bottle. Two days later, physical things start happening in the earth to force him to confirm to what has been programmed. After one week, the man becomes a toy to her because the realm of the spirit must. So you look at a woman who is barren. It may look like you just touched her stomach, but it's more than that. 
mysteries were programmed in the spirit. They said, how shall these things be seen that I know not a man? He says, the power of the highest. Brothers and sisters, I came to prophesy to someone. It will be a quick walk. Oh. It will be a quick walk. It will be a quick walk. I tell you, except it's not the God. I told you that the remaining services, don't miss them. They will be, help them please. They will be strongly prophetic services. Strongly prophetic services. It will be a quick walk. There is a mystery that can push men. False prophecy. Push men. It is possible. That in one day. Something can happen to you. And you will turn and say God. I'm sorry for doubting you. When it was time. For the animals to enter the ark of Noah. He didn't call one of them. Something was manipulated in the spirit. All the animals started lining up. Regardless of their hostilities, they lined up and came quietly. Listen, let me tell you something. The day I learned the vanity of the physical realm compared to the spiritual realm, I stopped wasting my time about physical things. Trust me, I really mean it. I saw how helpless the physical realm is that a body without a spirit is dead. I stopped wasting my time. Those who do business do it in the spirit realm. They program things in the spirit realm and just watch like strangers how things manifest. You program favor and you come and see strangers bringing blessings and people say, how is it happening? You see, what is happening in this ministry? Submit to you. It was programmed. It's not a coincidence. Something took you from where you were and brought you here. It's not just that you like a man. No. It's a mystery. That is the same thing that will put a baby in the barren womb. It's not when a man meets his wife that she gets pregnant too. A man meets his wife to give the child physical form. Do you believe what I'm saying? Because let me tell you something. One of the things we are going to do tonight is to change some things. There are results that are wrong. Something programmed it. It may be our ignorance. It may be something. I bring you a message of hope. The realm of the spirit is still there. That means there is still an ability to access it. Please sit down. I'm just trying to compose myself. My spirit is boiling this night. Listen. Listen. I have experimented this thing too many times. Too many times. Too many times. You can program favor. You can program breakthrough. Listen, you can program judgment on the wicked. You can program speed. The word of God is an instrument of creation. You can create realities that were not there. When you hear people testify, it's not like the testimony was waiting somewhere. A word created it. When you are programming mysteries, you don't attach a face to it. The wisdom of God will create the actors of that mystery in the physical realm. You don't say, God, bless me through my uncle. Uh -uh. I have access to the principles that brings the blessing. It is God that will start sourcing for the men that will act the movie that will bring your breakthrough. He can use a donkey. He can use stone. It doesn't matter. The most important thing is that let it come. Are we together? Yes. I tell you, believe me, brothers and sisters, when I tell you there are more angels on this ground than people sitting. There are more angels, angelic presence. I don't know if it's because of what I'm teaching tonight, but I prayed for strange intervention, angelic interventions, and the Lord is just opening my eyes, and I'm seeing that there are numerous angels battalions of angels 
every time God opens, do you know why when I speak like this, people start manifesting under the anointing? Because you see, when you are open to the realm of the spirit, portal is created immediately. Do you understand? And when that portal is created, there must be an effect. Remember when Paul, Saul now, saw Jesus, those there did not see, but there was an effect from the realm of the spirit. I'm explaining it because it's nothing strange, but I stand and I see angels inside outside like this i'm even on that fence you are seeing i'm seeing all kinds of things happening and this is by the power of the spirit i believe that not all the angels are the same they are according to their ranking and their functions according to what kind of intervention must manifest because see our challenges are not the same i know some of you may not have issues but let me tell you there are people the issues you have require recovery restoration judgment on somebody so there are angels that are allocated for that kind of thing was he not an angel that used hailstone and killed hundreds of thousands of people overnight please help them Jepreketo sadabala ko sambriata kata jegedeketo ko subriata jepres kata parota sabala ko leketa ko sabarote sabash enda kato kata bakata lekato sedeketi jiketo skibata karya mande katos I release angels strange ministry of intervention brakoto soto keta barata zegete kata by the authority of the most high angelic interventions over lives and families it must end tonight in the name of jesus is the year of triumph it must end tonight Thou shall arise, thou shall arise, thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion. Thou shall arise. God is arising over a family. God is arising over a family. Hallelujah. Listen, brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. You see, Ba, when you come before God's presence, the Bible tells us that upon Mount Zion, many things happen. The innumerable company of angels. These things are not fables. The Bible is not a book for religious people. It is life. It is true. It is our own belief that has made it look like a storybook. That you come to his presence and there is a strange intervention. I say it again in the name of Jesus. As I begin to teach, I've not finished. But in Jesus' name, I release the ministry of angels. I release the ministry of angels. That whilst the teaching is going on, let intervention start. In the name of Jesus Christ. Strange interventions. Strange interventions. Please sit down if you can. Please help those outside. Very quickly, I will give us four keys. Let's use ten minutes. Sorry, I will not be explaining it in depth. I want us to pray. I want us to pray. I want us to pray. I feel the spirit of prayer here. There are four keys to provoking divine intervention. Every time you are in a situation where you need the help of heaven urgently, do these four things. 
and you will change the tides in a way that will surprise you. Listen, brothers and sisters, as you learn these mysteries, please use them. Don't be too big to use them. Be childlike and apply them. You will be surprised. These are not cunningly divine fables. These are things that I do myself. They are not necessarily things I'm just telling you just for, for you know, just the sake of it. The first thing to do when you are in need of strange intervention is engage in the ministry of prayer. Number one, please quickly, prayer. I'll give you two scriptures and then we'll, we'll be able to look at two. Write it down, please. Acts chapter 12 from verse 5 to 11 talks about Peter. Don't, don't project it. I just want to hurry up. In Acts chapter 12 from verse 5 to 11, the Bible tells us how that James was caught by Herod. He was beheaded. And when it pleased the Jews, he now caught Peter and locked him. And then the Bible says the brethren began to pray. Whilst they began to pray, an angel came into the prison, brought Peter out. Peter even thought he was having a vision until he took him out and then Peter was free. We see that prayer was part of the instruments that were used, was used to bring strange and divine intervention. Acts chapter 12 from verse 5 to 11. Please write this down. Acts chapter 16 from verse 25 to 34. It's a long reading. Don't project it. Just write it down. Acts chapter 16 from verse 25 to 34. This was um, a scenario where Paul casted out the demon from the lady that was using divination to prophesy. And then the people got angry and they mobbed them, you know, and then the Bible says that they chained them and they were kept under the custody of a jailer. Then the Bible says Paul and Silas prayed and they sang and the Bible says everyone in the prison had them. All of a sudden there was an earthquake. And then the Bible says the things broke and all doors open. I like that. All doors. It didn't say some doors. When the chain broke, all doors. The doors of the prison of other people connected to them also open. All doors open. Prayer can open doors. James chapter 5 verse 13. Maybe you can project that. He said, is any of you afflicted? Let him pray. Prayer is the... Re biblical recommendation for affliction if any of you afflicted he said let him pray so whenever you are afflicted the key is to pray you may not know what to do i'm teaching you what to do now but regardless of what the situation is pray especially engaging in the spirit the most the most sound way to engage warfare prayers especially is to pray in the spirit first as you pray in the spirit the holy spirit begins to construct the scriptures in your mind you will not utter them just as words you will utter them as prophecies that's what we leave to bring the result so the first key is not just to start talking uh, you take out time and pray in the spirit that's why it is important to be filled with the holy ghost with a clear evidence of praying in tongues it's not a phenomenon for pentecostals there is a dimension of victory you will never be able to command are we blessed is any among you afflicted has any of you received a bad report has any of you been told that you have so 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 time to live has any strange spirit appeared to anybody and said you will not see Christmas so when others are rejoicing don't join them the key is not to get up and cry has any stranger come to you while you sleep and try to molest you and you just got up and said this thing has come again no sir has the door foreclosed towards you so the people who used to help you suddenly have changed the people who used to like you suddenly have changed the doors that used to bring you blessings have changed Something is suddenly happening to your spiritual life. Prayer zero. Word life zero. You need an intervention. Prayer. The scripture I want us to read now is Psalms 18. Never forget this scripture. It's one of the arsenals that I have for my personal. Um, it's a scripture that has blessed me. I have prayed this scripture. If, if this scripture was a shook. By now, I would have, maybe the soul would have eaten into pieces. I'm giving you a piece of my secret place. Psalm 18. Don't ever forget that scripture. 
Don't ever forget it for as long as you live. If you are a leader going far, this is a chief tool that you need. We're going to read from verse 1 to 6. Then I'll pick for you the verses we're reading. It's a long verse. Ready? Please give it to us. 1 to 6. I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. Listen. My God, my strength in whom I will trust. My buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. I will call upon the Lord. I will do what? Call upon the Lord in prayer who is worthy to be praised. So by calling upon him shall I be saved from my enemies. Verse 4. The sorrows of death compass me. This is a man in trouble. And the floods of ungodly men made me afraid. The sorrows of hell compass me about. The snares of death prevented me. In my distress, hallelujah. I didn't discuss it with people who cannot help me. I called upon the Lord and cried upon unto my God. He heard my voice from out of his temple. And my cry came before him. Even to where? Even to his ears. There is a kind of cry that enters the ears of the mighty God. Let's jump to verse 14, then to 17, then 40 to 45. It's a quick reading. Verse 14. Yea, he sent out his arrows. God has arrows. So, hey, look up. I learned this. I was checking arrows. You know, arrows that fly by day. And then I found out that it's not only the devil. God, the Bible says, yea, this is him intervening for me. These are part of the forces from his cabinet of judgment that he can release. He says he sent out his arrows and scattered them. And he shot out lightnings and discomfited them. 17. Please give us 17. He delivered me from my strong enemy and from them which hated me for they were too strong for me. Verse 40. Thou hast also given me the necks of my enemy that I may destroy them that hate me. They cried, but there was none to save them. Even unto the Lord, but he answered them not. 42. We are really reading to 48. Then did I beat them small as the dust before the wind and did cast them out of the dirt in their streets. 43. Oh dear, media. Thou hast delivered me from the strivings of my people, and thou hast made me the head of the hidden. A people whom I have not known shall serve me. Pastor, you need this for your ministry. Oh. When you open a branch in a locality that you don't know, there are people who need to come out. As soon as they hear of me, they shall obey me. The strangers shall submit themselves to me. 45. Verse 45. The strangers shall shake, fade away and be afraid out of their close places. Now, 47 to 48 is a scripture I don't want you to ever forget. Ready? Go ahead. Give us, well, go to 47. Go to 47. It is God that avenged me and subdued the people under me. Who did it? Who did it? He says it is God that avenged me and subdued the people under me. 48. He delivered me from my enemies. Yea, thou lifted me up above those that rise up against me. Thou hast delivered me from the violent man. Divine intervention. As a man of God, there are wicked forces day and night to destroy you. As a leader, there are wicked forces. But when you catch this and catch the revelation, you will walk through the valley of the shadow of death. And the Lord will be with you mysteriously. You will not travel and sit down and be shaking. Will a car jam me? Will it break my leg? Will it break my head? No, sir. Rest and quietness on the strength of scripture. Everybody say prayer. We need to learn how to call upon the Lord. Listen, do you know most people 
don't know how to call upon the Lord. They know how to lament. Hey, oh, you are not calling upon the Lord. You are shouting a lamentation, a, a strategy for lamentation that you inherited. He said unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul? Oh my God, let me not be ashamed, though. Let not my enemies triumph over me. There is a way you can pray with God. Sometimes, like Anna, you can't even shout. It's not something you, you just lie down and say, Oh God, oh God, deliver me from the shame of the wicked. There are enemies that are waiting to see you fail so that it will be their prophecy fulfilled. Lord, confound their, their counsel. And God will say, It got to my ear. I had it. I'm on my way coming. Prayer. Number two. The second key when you want to activate the mystery of divine intervention is to engage praise with understanding. Praise. Praise. Praise as an instrument of warfare and praise as an instrument of faith. Praise as an instrument of warfare but that you are blessing him in advance. Listen, this revelation is fast becoming a national anthem in the body of Christ. People are suddenly coming to the realization that praise can work wonders. You know, people don't know why the presence of God is still mighty in Africa. It's because Africa is a praising continent. Yes, yes sir, yes sir. They laugh at us. And think that when we are dancing is nonsense. Praise is a mystery. You want to turn around your situation? No matter what you do, if you have not praised, there is no Lord. Believe me. Lord, give us understanding. Psalm 22 verse 3. It says, Thou art holy, thou that inhabitest the praise of Zion. God makes the praise of men his habitation. But thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praises of Joshua Selman. Listen, I've taught us how to praise. You don't praise God without dancing. That, that is nonsense. You are, you are singing a national anthem. It's when you are reciting national anthem that you stand and put your hand on your chest. Moving your body is not a sign of, it's not, you are not, you have problems. You can cry but still praise. Are we together? It's, this is a, it's a powerful mystery I want you to learn. Our father bishop, David Oedeko, when he almost had a few weeks ago, he almost had a plane crash that would have taken his life. As soon as that happened, they declared praise. I said, oh dear spiritual intelligence let me tell you what other people would have done they would have organized a cocktail party and said you know we and the devil, the devil said that's i'm coming back praise praise is one of the most powerful ways to disgrace the devil because you see let me tell you one of depression is the absence of laughter and joy satan uses when people are about to die there are few people who die smiling most people are depressed. Then they keep quiet. He says that the joy of the Lord shall be your strength. So when there is no joy, your spirit becomes broken. And the Bible says a broken spirit dryeth the bones. You don't praise God when things are going well. You praise God to make them go well. Listen. You don't praise God when, when things are going well and you praise God. It's called thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is the dance you give and the testimony you give when things have manifested. But before they manifested, it's called perfected praise. Praise with understanding. Lord, you are so good. You are worthy of all my praise. Lord, you are so good. You are exalted as the Lord most high. Hold on. Listen. Let me tell you what Satan will tell you. The moment you sing that, he will tell you, is it not your sister that just died? Is it not five carryovers we are seeing? Or oh God, did they not just sack you? 
ah, the gentleman that has been promising to marry you, is it not by 8 a.m. this morning? He says, not doing again. The devil brings it because he knows. You see, Satan knows that we function in the realm of the flesh, the senses. Are we together now? So he brings things that resonate with your senses. When you see them, you are now depressed. But that's the time. Anytime you are praising God, Satan says, why are you praising him? He says, no reason. I'm praising him to create my testimony. You see that? Listen. Corporate dancing and praising is good. But you must learn to do this thing alone. If it means you trusting God to get one small room for yourself for the purpose of praise, it's worth it all. It's worth it. Reserve the 40000 for shoes and use it to pay for a small room. Put worship. Wake up in the night. Because there is personally me. I don't have time to do that dance and praise in the afternoon. All kinds of calls distracting in the night. Oh dear. Oh dear. Ask God what I do in the night. Yes. Yes. Sometimes I carry koinonia documents. Drop it on the ground. Dance before it. And shame the devil. I carry my phone. Put it there. Not dancing before them. I say, Lord, you are great. I dance before you. People are coming from everywhere. Rain or no rain. Publicity or no publicity. And God says, you are doing this for me. I say, Lord, who else will I do it for? And you are celebrating him. Lord, you are faithful. And you are worshiping him. You are sweating like a fool. And while you are doing that, God is dispatching angels. Okay? Make sure you wake that guy to transfer money to his account. That hundred thousand I gave you, I didn't tell you who to send it to. Send it to him. Oh, his mother is at home. For giving birth to him, send an angel there too. And my innocent mother is lying down. She'll wake up in the morning and say, Mama, where are you? Say, who are you? Say, just come. Take my praise. This our big manism has cheated us beyond imagination. This pride that you don't have results and you are still talking, you know, ah, I, how can, okay, I agree that you can't, you think I can dance? Look at me. You think, no, 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 God, I don't have that gift of dancing. It's not a competition. This is your destiny. This is breakthrough. If a thief puts a gun and says you should dance, won't you do something? Some of us, when we were in the world, you know the kind of dance, demonic, satanic dance that you did for the devil for free, that destroyed you. You got drunk dancing it. A spirit entered you dancing it. I'm not saying you should dance all kinds of nonsense dance in the house of God, but I'm saying there, there are times you need to learn to sing and dance alone. With, listen, listen. Most people dance. You can turn your dancing time to a nightclub and God will look at you and say you are wasting your time. It is the revelation that makes the singing and the dancing profitable. Don't just move your body around just because you are happy. That, that's, that's entertainment. Brothers and sisters, there is the kind of dance that you dance with tears in your eyes. But you are doing it with understanding. Don't think you will only always be laughing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. No job for you. No job for your wife. No job for your five children. They are all graduates. You have prayed, oh, nothing happened. Brothers and sisters, try singing and celebrating God. Everyone in their room rejoicing. Jesus, you are full and you are just dancing. Let me tell you what will happen. The Lord will start bringing testimonies. Remember when a cow would have killed you in 1995. And you say, Lord, I remember. And you start dancing it. You are, you are compressing doubt because something is about to be created. You will dance and dance till you fall under the anointing there and get up and clean yourself and be tired and sleep and wake up and drag yourself. Brothers and sisters, you have programmed something in the spirit. You will get up in the morning and just dress and say, Father, thank you. And get a phone call. Who is this? I'm seeing a document that has been here four years on my table. Who are you? So I finished for what did you read? Anyway, it's not what you read. Where are you? Come quickly. I like you. Ha! You just know that praise is working. 
praise is working. Let the people praise me. Psalm 67 verse 5 to 7. Let the people praise me. It's an instruction. The earth has been programmed to deliver certain results. But let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. Verse 6. Then shall the earth yield her increase. And God, even our God, shall bless us. You can stop there. Zephaniah. It may be difficult for some of us to find, but just write. Media, please give it to us. Zephaniah chapter 3. Let's read 14 to 20. I hope we can just quickly hurry up. Zephaniah chapter 3. Zephaniah chapter 3 and verse 14. We're reading to verse 20. Listen. It says, sing, O daughter of Zion. It's not talking about a lady. It's talking about human beings. You must read the Bible prophetically. When he says daughter, find out what it means. There are times in the Bible all people are sons. There are times all people are daughters. Are we together? So don't think he's talking to ladies. Sing, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O Israel. Be glad and rejoice with all the heart. O daughter of Jerusalem. We're reading to verse 20. The Lord had taken away thy judgments. And has cast out thine enemy, the king of Israel. Even the Lord is in the midst of thee. Thou shalt not see evil anymore. In that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, fear thou not. And to Zion, let not thine hands be slack. We're reading to verse 20. Give us 17. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save. He will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with what? Singing. Singing. I will gather them that are sorrowful for the solemn assembly. Who are of thee. To whom the reproach of it was a burden. Verse 19. Behold at that time. I will undo all that afflict thee, and I will save her that halted, and gather her that was driven out. I will get them praise and fame in every land where they have been put to shame. Hmm. At that time, I will bring you again, even in the time that I will gather you, for I will make you a name and a praise among all the people of the earth. When I turn back your captivity before your eyes, say the Lord, you read that scripture and say, Lord, whether you understand it or not, I am dancing with this revelation that you are turning something. I can see everything. Hey, hey. For. Do you see everything? I can see everything. One more time. Can see everything. Turning around. Please sit down. When you go back home, continue. 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 Apostle, I don't have a house. Find a tree. Find somewhere. It is a place that will give you a house, my brother. I'm staying with neighbors. I don't want to disturb them. Find somewhere behind one rock. You don't have to shout and disturb the neighborhood. Just engage in praise. Glorify God. You may be tired, but it's called a sacrifice of praise. Brothers and sisters, do this and see how things will turn in your life. There's nothing the devil can do with someone who is full of joy and glory. This gloominess that you see people tie their face around, it doesn't bring breakthrough. It adds to your sorrow. You loosen up and say, Father, you are faithful. You are tying your face around and people say, why are you? Why should I not tie my face? Or will you pay my rent for me? My brother, it's praise that will pay that rent. So you turn everything and rejoice. Let me tell you what many people will say who see you engaging this. <laughs> I say, don't mind all these men of God. They are turning you people to be stupid. You see that? But when you meet them for rent, they won't give you. If you want God's results, follow his methods. 
Number three, quickly. The third key to activating the mystery of divine intervention is called seed faith. Say after me, seed faith. Listen, I know that giving has been abused. Listen carefully, please. Outside, online, listen carefully. I know that giving has largely been abused because it has looked like some manipulation and journalists and bloggers have not done justice because they have mixed everything and made it look like giving and sacrifice is some gimmicks to corner money and give a man of God. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. Something I do all the time, including today. Every time you are in a situation, listen please. Every time you are in a situation that only God can step in with understanding, haven't prayed, package a seed, speak to that seed and give it an instruction. And sow that seed, release. If you just sow money, it's bribery. It's not the money. Revelation. The Bible is full of the potent power of seed faith. Connecting your faith with a seed and a sacrifice to provoke God's hand for intervention. I've done it countless times on behalf of this ministry. I've done it countless times on behalf of myself, my family, my friends, people I love. Seeds. The seed that is in your hand can create a destiny that will surprise you if you know what to do with it. Please listen to me. Don't think I'm asking you to give me money. No. There are people who when they hear this, they just frown their face. Not at all. Not at all. God has been faithful to me. Are we together? Listen. There are people who have turned their lives around overnight. If there is one thing I know in my little walk with God, is that your seed can bruise the head of the serpent. I promise you. I have seen people quarter to shame everything was against them it was obvious they are finished and they used their seed and turned the hands of life in a way that you cannot imagine my life is full of sacrifices Psalm 126 don't turn there verse 1 to 6 you write it that when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion he said we were like them that dream. The first six verses. The, la the sixth verse ends by saying, they that sow in tears. The whole verses are connected. Verse six is connected to verse one. God turning away the captivity of Zion like a dream. He says that they that sow in tears will reap in joy. He that weepeth, bearing precious seeds, the Bible says, shall doubtless return rejoicing, bringing in the sheep. It's not every seed. To be cheerful does not mean to laugh. To be cheerful means that there be a merriment in your heart. There are some times you will cry for the seed you sow. Hallelujah. Someone came over to my place today and the Lord instructed him to bring me a seed. And Quite a very serious seed. Just, you know, a military officer just came, dropped the seed. And when I saw it, the seed was in dollars. I said, wow, in this recession, this seed. And the Lord told me, no, 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 no. Make sure you don't touch it. This is your seed for something. And the Lord told me, I started dancing. I said, thank you, Jesus. This is it. When God gives you seed to sow, it's intervention no? Getting the seed to sow is an act of God's mercy. That you say, Lord, I must provoke this, but I have no seed. Then he gives seed to the sower. Those who know, only know how to eat anything plus their destiny, they keep getting bread. But those who want to create a future. Brothers and sisters, I have created realities in my life with seeds. I believe in the power of a seed. Listen. Don't let people because of their cynicism. The imbalance, when a man creates an imbalance in scripture, you don't avoid that truth because it has been abused. You bring it to context 
and teach people. Brothers and sisters, a seed can change your life. Believe me. I have done crazy things in my life. I thank God that it's only God that reveals that, that it's only God that knows the heart of men. There are things if I tell you that I have done with seeds. Some of you, you are not related to me, but you will be angry. You will remove your shoe and stone me with it and say you are very stupid in this recession. Seeds. There was a year, I've shared it again and again, that God gave us an instruction. We were just resuming. Koinonia. And God gave an instruction. He said, so everything, everything, everything. I don't mean small. So everything, let it go. I said, thank you, Jesus. You are ready to lift us. That is revelation. By faith, Abel offered. You offer by faith. You don't offer by, by tricks and all kinds of, no, no, no. And we release it. Brothers and sisters, it didn't reach seven days. Seven days. More than ten times that amount came. Seeds. I'm not saying you should give carelessly, no. But brothers and sisters, the seed that is in your hands can silence a spirit that has destroyed your destiny for years. Nobody is moving forward in your family. You are just sitting down. And God is saying, look, you have to provoke heavens with a sacrifice. One day you get angry and say, Lord, I am tired of this. Anna did not have money to give, but she said, Lord, let's do it. Give me the child. I've given the child already as a seed. And God said, it's a done deal. There was a king in the Bible who they wanted to slaughter and defeat. It was very clear the nation of Israel would defeat them. And he carried his son, his future, and slew the child. The Bible says an indignation rose up to heaven. Battle ended. When God wanted to redeem man, it was an issue of urgency. God carried Jesus, the lamb upon the throne, slew him. Jesus cried and God said, that's not the issue. Man must be saved. This greed over the little we have is what has destroyed us. Get used to money leaving you to go and wait for you in your future. Get used to it. You may not have a seed, but brothers and sisters, let me tell you, there are many ways to give. Money is not the only seed. It's just the seed that can easily be exchanged. That's why. There are times that people have made radical sacrifices. Do you believe what I'm teaching you? Principles of divine intervention. Trace your life at the moment where God gave you specific instructions that you did things that almost brought tears from your eyes. And watch what happened. You just did not study it enough to know how to keep it going. I hardly share my testimonies. I stopped because I found out that it annoys a lot of people and I'm not ready to attract unnecessary, um, you know, people once they hear preachers talk, there are people who just get angry, just like that. It's nonsense. Brothers and sisters, learn to sow seeds. But the most powerful part of sowing seeds is to give them instructions. This is the mistake many of us have been making. You package a seed. Some of you come and join the line. Apostle, here is a seed I'm sowing. I always ask people, what is this for? And the people say, for nothing, just, I just feel like seeing you. That's a donation. That's a donation, brothers and sisters. All seeds are not the same. There is a seed you give to the poor. There is something it does to you. There is a seed that you give to widows and orphans. There is a kind of result. There is a seed you put on the ground because you are tired of where you are. If the word of God were a lie, I would have died sins because the risk I've taken with this word, it would have killed me sins. But I believe you. I believe you. When I sowed that seed today, I was happy. The joy that filled my heart. I await the testimony that comes from it. Wanting a harvest that you have not scheduled through sowing is a waste of time. It's, imagine now, 
Somebody who didn't go to the farm. He has a land somewhere. He just carries his wife and his children and carries a truck and he just goes to an empty place. You will find wheat there. But whoever sowed January, February down to April is smiling right now because he knows it's harvest time. Brothers and sisters, I pray for us. May God kill greed from our life. This attachment to money, listen. This, many people think wealthy people are the ones who are attached to money. It's a lie. Wealthy people in the kingdom have become wealthy because they have conquered it. Your seed is an instrument that creates your future. Hallelujah. Learn to release seeds. Learn to release seeds. Learn to release seeds. I'll never forget a gentleman who sent me a text. He sowed a seed. I remember it was when he sent me the text. Truly speaking, I remember. They sowed seeds and I was opening the envelopes. Most times it takes, it honestly takes a while. Maybe some days before I even open the envelope to see what is there and pray on it. And I opened the envelope and I saw five naira and a letter. The guy said this five naira was his Isaac. I know you will laugh and say, hey, this stupid boy, no. I respected that because that, that thing I knew would create a harvest. And the guy, I opened it and wrote some things like that. And then I just felt led to pray for him. Do you know it didn't reach two weeks? The guy sent me a text and said, I have never in my life seen favor like this. Five naira. It's not about the money. It's about the heart. Somebody was tired of where. How many jobless people have not sown anything? And they keep moving around with CV. What must tell you the devil is fighting you? You carry a seed and say, God, please. I'm married with three children. No job. This mockery must end. I drop this and I tie it to my job. And then praise around that seed. Praise around the seed. And your brothers and sisters say, so this is what they are teaching you. This is how these stupid men of God keep eating your money. And all of a sudden, the heaven opens. Breakthrough upon breakthrough. You are praying to buy land. Oh Lord, please give me two million naira to buy land. I now have 150,000. Just top it up for me. And God says, you mustn't buy it. Just learn. Let me show you. And all of a sudden, someone stands up and blesses you. I think it was you, Ejimi, I was showing you, was it yesterday? I was showing him the documents of a property that was given to me recently. I said, God, what is this? What is this? For as long as you sow, whether you like it or not, the law is that you must reap. So if you have not sown anything, stop, stop saying, God, where is my harvest? And he said, what, what are you saying? A woman who does not take in, is she expecting a child? No, sir. No, sir. Schedule seasons of breakthrough in your life. Your seed is a weapon. Not just your prayer. Your seed is a weapon. Your seed is a weapon. One mama called me one time. I was led by God. Honestly, I felt so, I didn't know how to talk to her because she sounded like an elderly woman. And she was praying for divine financial intervention. I said, mama, please, I want you to sow a seed. Not to me. I, I, I would never have the effrontery to tell that woman to sow into my life. I'm sure that woman will be older than my mother. I said, please try, connect with a seed. And the woman said she doesn't have anything. I said, it's not true, mama. There is something you have. What do you do? She said she farms yam. I said, carry four or five tubers of yam. Find any church. I said, which church is close around your area? She said, there's living faith. I said, go there. Find four tubers of yam. Tie it and be praying, singing any song in your language you know while you march to the pastor's, um, uh, what do you call it? The pastor's office. Whether the pastor is eating the yam or not is not his business. Only a stupid man of God resents the seed of a desperate believer. It's not whether you are, more than 50% of the things people sow into my life, I don't need it. It's not for me. I recognize what it is. Is God speaking to someone? Seed faith. Learn to connect. 
Learn to connect. Learn to connect. Learn to connect. In 1 Kings 17, when our time is gone, just write it. We don't have to project it. 1 Kings 17 from verse 7 to 6. From verse 7 to 16. 1 Kings chapter 17, when you read from verse 7 to verse 16. The Bible talks there about Brook Cherith when it dried during the famine. And the Bible says that the Lord told Elijah to go to a place called Zarephath. And he said there was a widow there. God wanted to intervene in that widow's life. When the prophet got there, he said, give me water. She was running to go and bring water. And he said, please, and make some bread for me. And the woman said, I'm sorry, man of God. I respect you, but honestly, this is the last one I'm about to eat with my son so that we'll just wait until we die. And the prophet said, no, no. When you give, it does not end. When you give, you extend the life of whatever it is. The prophet was teaching her. He said, make it for me first. In our generation, they say that's a heartless and wicked, devilish prophet. But the moment she did that, the Bible says she lived off what was there until the famine was over. You can change your life. November, December is too short a time. No. November, December is too short a time, brothers and sisters. God can step into your life and do something in your life that you cannot imagine. Don't be surprised that you'll be celebrating New Year in your own house. Whereas right now, you don't even have land. I'm talking to believers. Don't be surprised that you can give away up to 5, 10 million by December. Whereas what you have in your account now is not up to 10,000. Listen, I'm not talking nonsense. I'm not stupid. Don't be surprised. That after 10, 20 years that your wife has been buried, that she's going to celebrate New Year two months pregnant. You do every calculation you know it's not up to two months, but she's two months pregnant. Don't ask where the child came from. That right now, you are not even sure where your certificate is because you are tired, you have thrown it somewhere. But don't be surprised that you will be managing a business by the end of this year. Is it not God we are talking about? Is it not the God of heaven we are talking about? Number four. The fourth key is the power of prophecy. The power of the prophetic. Weapons of supernatural intervention. The power of prophecy. Second Kings chapter 7 verse 1 to 8. We've already discussed it. Just write it down. Second Kings chapter 7 from verse 1 to 8. The story of Elisha in Samaria. And the abundance that came to an entire land because there was a divine intervention by prophecy. Hosea chapter 12 from verse 13. Please give it to us. The Bible says, and by a prophet. Listen carefully. And by a prophet. It says... The Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. How did they come out of Egypt? By a prophet. Not by God. You would think God will say, oh, by me. Yes, it is by God. But the instrument that he used was a prophet. And by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. And by a prophet was he preserved. Listen. There are challenges that people go through in life that is totally needless. If only they can locate a genuinely anointed prophet of God. You can come out of a situation overnight. Some battles are totally needless. They are products of pride and ignorance. Take note of these things I'm saying. Pride and ignorance. Some battles are totally needless. There is enough grace and anointing to bail people out of it. A gentleman had been writing, I think it was Wayek or Neko, I can't remember, for over maybe six, seven years. I remember one time he came and he was crying. I didn't even allow him to finish. I said, that's all right. Let me pray for you. It is done. And he just went and the guy testified that truly speaking, he answered nonsense in the exam. 
because his brain had, he had stretched the thing, he has passed the age that he should be concentrating to be reading for work. And yet it came out, he had all credits like that. And he said, truly, this is my result. I say, of course, it's not your result. God gave you to help you move forward. Of course, it's not your result. When other people are celebrating their intelligence, you go to God and say, thank you, this one you gave me. There are things when other people are saying, I got, you turn to God and say, this one came from you. Prophetic intervention. Brothers and sisters, God still has anointed men. No? Yes. An anointed man is not a man who speaks well. An anointed man is not a man who throws people under the anointing. There are people who are privileged by the election of grace. That God has put ancient, ancient possibilities within them for the sake of the body. Your own price is to believe. They may not look like it, but they carry it. What you have, you have. It was given to you. Are we together? I truly believe that someone tonight, I told us the remaining services for this year will be very strongly prophetic services. And it will start from tonight. Just the five minutes or so we have to pray. And then I speak over your life. When prophecy comes, receive it. Receive it. You can reject it. But you can receive it. Do you know? I listen to every koinonia message. This message now that is being preached. It's not Joshua Selman. This is the man of God teaching. Joshua Selman will listen to the man of God later in the week. And when it's time to prophesy, I will lift my hands and receive and pray in tongues. Otherwise, I will keep blessing and the anointing that came from the throne through me. Through me. I must also receive it by faith. Prayer point number one. Father, I am tired of where I am. I am tired. You are a changer of people's lives. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Father, I am tired of where I am, truly speaking. Lord, this year will not end like this. I've not yet seen any notable testimony in my life. And the year is about to end. Oh, God of heaven, arise, arise. Those online pray. Lord, the favor you said I will walk in, I am yet to see it manifest, and it is November. The prosperity that you said I will walk in. Lord, I believed you, I still believe you. So We are desperate people. We want more, more Lord. Lift your voice and pray. We are desperate people. We want more, more Lord. We are desperate people. We want more, more. Tired of the status quo It's gotta be more than this It's gotta be more, gotta be more Gotta be more than this For desperate people do desperate things And we press in Gotta be more Say after me in the name of Jesus. Shout it. Say in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare over every mountain that stands between me and my result. Hear the word of the Lord. Be crushed into pieces. Lift your voice and pray. Shakatoko sote parata. In the name of Jesus, 
hear the word of the Lord. I speak over every mountain, mountain of witchcraft, mountain of delay. I cross you by the God of heaven. Those outside pray, online pray, I decree and declare, hear the word of the Lord, who are down mountain before Joshua Selman, I command you become play. Hallelujah. Say in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that every promise hanging in the realm of the spirit, I prophesy by the mystery of divine intercession. You must manifest now. Lift your voice and pray. Find expression. I give you a body. My breakthrough. Find expression. My lifting. Find expression. My advancement. Find expression. I give you a body. Manifest in my life. Find expression. I've seen you in my dreams. I've seen you in my visions. I command you to manifest. Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Everything I've lost. Say it again in the name of Jesus. Everything that should not have left me. But was taken away from me. I decree and declare. Return back to my destiny. Lift your voice and pray. Please be serious. Be serious. Pray. Every relationship that should not have left every finance that should not have left every favor every breakthrough i call you back every access every platform in the name of jesus the son of the living god lift your hands in the name of Jesus I prophesy to you I decree and declare by the anointing of the Spirit of God I push you to the next level of your life I push you to the next level of your life and hear me I decree I don't know what stands your way I come tonight in the name of Jesus and I crush it into pieces the same way the Red Sea was divided I command every obstacle to be divided in the name of Jesus. Hear me? Every physical scenario that must be created in the earth realm to force what is in the spirit to find expression, I schedule that event now in the name of Jesus. Jesus told us, Everywhere in his crusade, demons came. They were not afraid of Jesus' own crusade. Demons, they followed people. They didn't wait outside and enter later on. They came. Imagine Jesus in a crusade. Praise the Lord. The people shouted hallelujah and the demons were still in them. And they did not go. 
when the word is not engaged it does not have any power to do anything a spirit can sit down the same way some of you are sitting quietly now as sincere and innocent as you are in the next few minutes you'll be surprised what will be happening in your own life and then you will see doors that have been closed opening like this then you will know that these doors were not closed by mistake and will not be opened by mistake everything good comes to everybody except you the moment is your turn something terrible happens a gentleman just sees you and say beautiful lady can i go and see your parents and that's the end of it his business goes down his life goes down everything crashes until he leaves you then he goes back up do you believe what i'm teaching you So while it is true that it's the Holy Spirit that ultimately creates conviction, the manifestation of the miraculous in our lives and in the church. You know, when I came down, you need to see the multitudes of people outside. There are people sitting on the soccer way here. My brothers and my sisters, listen, you went to school. Do you think human beings are stupid? Do you think someone will transport himself from another nation or another state? Some of you have not eaten since you came. You came straight to sit down. Is God so wicked to sit down and allow you carry your trouble and go back? Oh, not Koinonia. I welcome you to a place where God has given us the keys to deal with everything that is not of God. I saw so many people standing outside the overflow by the roadside and compassion just gripped my heart i said imagine if i were one of these people and they were happily standing they were not complaining they just knew that if i may but touch the hem of his garment my brothers and my sisters let me tell you forgive me if it sounds proud but god has given us something let me tell you sincerely we we make bold and we ask the world to come and receive because he has given us something I told you last week you only knock a door that you don't have the key when you have a key you don't you stop knocking you open that's the same way your destiny will be open the Lord declared prophetically that this is a year of extraordinary fruitfulness so in a meeting like this if I were you my heart is stayed on that word listen let me tell you please listen you see me teaching passionately we are going to pray when i teach like this huh, i don't teach as a preacher i come with my heart full of a burden are you getting what i'm saying i come sincerely with my heart full of a burden because i love god but i love his people too my greatest satisfaction is not my personal progress is seeing the hand of god made manifest in your life when instructions are given when these spiritual things are given you must open your heart to believe them you see the the gospel works with the simplicity of childlike faith sometimes many of us carry this trado african pride and that's what stops us from receiving god wants to step in and touch you and you are wondering Will God really touch me? You know my peculiar problem. You know the name. Abba, are you the first to be in trouble? God knows how to deliver the righteous from trouble. Let me tell you this. I don't care what the situation is. But I want us to agree that this God of heaven, uh, the king of the universe, that he will arise for you tonight. You see, let me tell you this my prayer this year when i was fasting and praying this year i prayed a prayer i said lord some people don't know what a testimony is give them one they only know how other people's testimonies the lord did this for this but they have never had a testimony themselves the day you have a real testimony yourself it will humble you you wouldn't know whether to stand or to kneel down that's what i'm praying for you for today a testimony When the hand of God comes in a meeting and upon a man, you see, let me tell you this.
the supernatural is not just falling down and roll you can fall down and roll from left to right and stand up and go back and not testify the proof that God came is the testimony that follows the testimony the testimony of Jesus the testimony of Jesus apostle I came here barren much miracle service by April miracle service I'm one month pregnant that's a testimony listen come David down when the devil oppresses your life destroys everything about you he uses men as a canvas to write a letter to God that your dominion and your royalty is still being contested with oppression is a letter sent through men to God the highest of God's creation the devil writes upon your life I will destroy the family and I will make sure everyone begs like you send a um, a chat send and then a miracle is God's reply that God writes through you and says in spite of this I am still on the throne It's true. I believe in miracles. I honestly and truthfully believe in miracles. I believe in principles. I believe in mysteries. But I believe in divine intervention. My brothers and my sisters, God can shorten a man's journey. What then is the excellency of his mercy? Listen. God is a God of process, I agree. Listen carefully. God is a God of principles, I agree. He will not excuse laziness and he will not excuse spiritual laxity. But let me tell you, when blind Bartimio said, Thou son of David, have mercy on me. The mercy of God can shorten the journey of a man. If you get born again at age 40, do you know how long it takes to know God? genuinely know God you don't read your Bible in two months and know God but there's something the Spirit of God can do and give you a solid encounter that in six months you have caught up with the spiritual level of more than five years how about restoration your parents started building from 1999 till today it has stopped at Lintel level right there you went to school and said, I'm going to pay it and finish everything. The day you said you pay it, you almost died. I made a vow with my life that I would believe this word and I will engage it. Life is too risky to be careless with spiritual laws. Engage it. Don't wait until the devil kills your life and your children before. You know, many believers learn too late. Let me say this, and thank God for his mercy you will receive. But do you know there are some of you, the Lord spoke to you about coming here since last year. You've been arguing and giving reasons and excuses. Your situation would not have been that bad. But thank God because although Lazarus was three days dead, Jesus is still the resurrection and the life. Not only the healer. When I prayed, I told the Lord, I said, please, Lord, give people a testimony, real testimonies. I was blind. Now I see. God did something in three weeks to my finances. Everybody see what God can do. God transformed my family. God turned me around and did something for me. I don't doubt your love for God, but there must be proofs of that love. There must be proofs of that love. Somebody shout, Lord, give me an evidence. Say, Lord, give me an evidence. I believe in proofs. John chapter 4 and verse 48. I'll begin to pray shortly. Bless you. 4 verse 48. He says, and Jesus said unto him, who was speaking here? Jesus. Except ye see signs and wonders, ye will not believe how true how true that there are so many people in your family until they see what the power of god does in your life they will never believe your god they think god is one of those things this is a charm this is this this is that and then god is one of them 
but the day like Dagon all those gods fall before the Almighty God and you return back with a solid evidence let me tell you that day like Pharaoh your loved ones will confess that this your God is God are we together so I want you to be serious don't sit down and just look around and say ah, who is going to receive let me clap for him no it's an insistence it's a desperation except you see miraculous signs you shall not believe Luke chapter 5 we we'll read the first 11 verses that miracles can help to create solid convictions Charles and Francis Hunter powerful evangelists they've gone to be with the Lord now they wrote a book that a miracle is worth a thousand words I believe them I believe them the world is tired of our noise and our stories they want to see a demonstration and a manifestation of the reality of the life and the power of God it says and it came to pass as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God he stood by the lake of Gennesaret next verse please and saw two sheep standing by the lake but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets uh-huh we're reading to 11 and he entered into one of the ships which was Simon's and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land and he sat down and taught the people out of the ship next verse now when he had left speaking he said unto Simon launch out into the deep and let your nets for a drought five what happened Simon answering said master we have toiled all night in other words he said Lord look you are not the first to pray for me a man of God prayed for me in Zaria another man prayed in wherever you know so God is one of those things you bless me oh yeah do it master we have toiled all night not for a few hours all night night vigil looking for a fish and did not catch even one it says nevertheless at thy word I will let down the net six and when they had this done they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their seven and they beckoned unto their partners which were in the other ship that they should come and help them and they came and filled both ships miracles can create relationships that you get a miracle and partners that were minding their business you can say come and join me who will not follow someone with results who will not let me tell you the Bible talks about a wealthy man and um, how did he put it now a poor man that we even with much entreaties they will run away from him there are many people that come from where we come from and will pass us as if they don't know us because you represent shame and anything that looks like Ichabod, the departure of the glory, men will usually find a way to excuse it from. Ah, but the Bible says you will be called Beulah and Hephzibah, a delight. And they came and filled both ships so that they began to sing. Verse 8 when simon peter saw this look at this this is what miracles do he fell down at Jesus' knees saying depart from me i'm a sinful man was a sermon preached a serious miracle happened and that miracle created conviction the same way some of you have been laughing at men of god sincerely and laughing at everything that has to do with the power of god and by the time we'll be sharing the grace tonight you will stand and go back quietly not talking to anybody and say I've seen today I heard with my ears like Job but I've seen with my eyes that God is real and his power is real his grace is real nine for he was this is what led to the repentance he was so men can be astonished to repentance that they look at your life and say promise when did this happen when did god lift you was it not last year together we were discussing and you tell him there is a name god is called though, the lifter of men the lifter of men let me tell you my brothers and my sisters 
run away from anybody who tell you results don't matter they do they do out of the abundance of the evidence of the workings of God in your life the nations will bow to your God they will never bow to you just because you are talking man of God hear me no results you have MP pews there's there's no way around it there must be an evidence a serious evidence when John questioned the messiahship of Jesus he didn't answer with a statement he said go and tell John what you have seen the blind see the deaf hear the dead are raised and the gospel is preached to the meek and then he says blessed is he that is not offended so the moment there are no miracles the messiahship of the Christ is questioned John himself, the one who ordained Jesus, said, go and ask him, is he the Messiah? Miracles confirm that Jesus is the Messiah. God is not a herbalist. He's not a herbalist that is ahead of other herbalists. No. Wherefore God had so highly exalted him and given him a name. There are people who have names. Politicians have names. Businessmen have names, captains of industry, gatekeepers of mountains have names. But my brothers and my sisters, there is a name. It says there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. And it's in that name tonight that we will wreak havoc in the kingdom of darkness. The miraculous manifests the glory of God and causes people to not only believe God but to trust God John chapter 2 and verse 11 the first miracle of Jesus what we call the miracle at the wedding of the Cana of Galilee he turned water to wine the Bible says this beginning of miracles this beginning of not this beginning of sermons, not this beginning of discussions, this beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee and manifested forth his glory and the disciples believed on him. Believed on him. We believe in the God that heals and saves and delivers. That's why we kept the seats for you. That's why we, we knew you would come because the hand of God will bring you and we knew you would not be disappointed brothers and sisters there is a God in heaven God is not a herbalist don't let your pain demean him he is still the king of the universe the whole world lieth in wickedness Acts chapter 10 and verse 38 how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the holy ghost and with power and he went about doing good it takes the manifestation of the power of god to do good and healing all they that were oppressed of the devil for god was with him for god was with him for god was with him We're going to pray. You have to convince yourself. It's going to be a quick walk. And we're going to cry to God and say, Lord, whatever I carried from my house, whatever I carried from my place of work that I've brought before you, it should not return back with me. It should be clear and evident that I met the Lord Jesus Christ. It should be clear and evident right where you are sitting you will soon stand up but right where you are sitting i'd like you to talk to the lord please be serious and be desperate lord i have come to you i've come to you i've come to you i've come to you my life must be changed my finances must be changed my destiny must be changed lord i've come to you as a pastor i've come to you as a prophet as an apostle there has to be greater oil upon my life
Lord, I hear you are a restorer. Restore me. Online, please make sure you are praying. Those outside, make sure you are praying. There is a God that answers prayer. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, it says we were like them that dream, and our mouths were filled with laughter, and said they among the hidden, the Lord had done great things for them. It says the Lord had done great things for us, whereof we are glad. Turn again our captivity like the streams of the Negev. Turn again our captivity. There is a God that can turn around the captivity of men. Pray. Doesn't matter where you are seated, doesn't matter where you are connecting from. The power of God is able to save to the uttermost. Father, I'm praying that infirmity in my body must leave this night. That financial situation must die this night. That oppression that has kept my family down. Did the Bible not say this is a victory that overcometh the world, even our faith? God is a miracle worker. God is a glorious God. God is a miracle worker. God is a glory shortly and I'll begin to minister by the Spirit your own assignment is to receive you have come let me tell you something there is enough grace to solve whatever challenge it is that has plagued you yours is to believe in the power of God it says if you will believe you will see the glory of God if you will believe you will see the glory of God if you will believe you will see the glory of God. If you will believe, you will see the glory of God. Hallelujah. 
praise the Lord a lady the power of God is going to come upon a lady outside please carry her and bring her now there is a lady I'm seeing I just saw light from in here write the power of God upon that lady please bring her please bring her and then bring the someone on this row I'm seeing like like a smoke just going round, and it's like it's locating someone the power of God is going to come on someone please pick the person and bring the person out you reign you reign hello From outside I crush the hand of captivity over your life in the name of Jesus Christ I crush the hand of captivity over your family in the name of Jesus I saw a lot of oppression over the life of this lady and in the name of Jesus we silence the voice of wickedness we silence the voice of wickedness hold on please the Lord is showing me something right now. I saw this while I ministered in Abel Kuta. I started seeing snakes on the ground. Snakes on the ground. And that's what I'm seeing right now. And this is, this is the manifestation of a spirit. And there are many families that are under this yoke. Whether you believe it or not, just let me minister to you. I'm declaring right now, the power of God is going to start coming on people that represent those families. Bring them out. You are not shouting anything. You are not saying anything. Bring them out. I'm speaking by the Spirit. The Word of God has been declared. There are families. I'm seeing serpents, snakes, snakes. Inside and outside, bring them. Even the lawful captives shall be delivered. Even the lawful captives shall be delivered. And the captives of the mighty, by the fire of the Holy Spirit, I judge those spirits wherever you are, represented in anyone here, represented in anyone here, I speak by the hand of God. Hello, bring them out. I'm still on that case. The power of God is still locating people. I'm still snakes. Jesus I'm still praying we're not doing too many things tonight we're going to the root of many people's challenges I'm saying it again there are still spirits and I speak by the anointing of the Spirit of God wherever they are overflow one two three across the road I'm declaring judgment judgment upon those spirits the fire of God is coming upon you right now whether you are standing for yourself or for your family, bring them out. There is no escape for when his voice comes, they come out from their hiding place. I 
Hallelujah. Now, listen. There are people. I'm seeing something that looks like a knife being inserted in people. And I'm seeing people beginning to run. Just run. When you see people doing that, hold them and bring them. The Lord is bringing deliverance. That one is not speed. This one is not the prayer for speed. I'm just telling you as the Lord is showing me. Right now I decree and declare. I don't know those that the Lord is cutting them free from every kind of diabolism. But I stretch my hands by the Spirit. I command judgment on every force. Judgment on every power. In the name of Jesus Christ. The hand of God is coming upon them. You will begin to see them run around. Just running. It's, it's, it's not a, a making of their own. It's by the power of the Holy Ghost. Bring them out. Oh, 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 oh. My help has come. Oh, 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 oh. My help. Oh, 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 oh. My help has come. Oh, 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 oh. My my help has come. Hallelujah. The Lord is giving me an instruction right now. Now we are ready to shout. Listen. The Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing what looks like a grave. And the Lord is saying he's delivering families from the power of the grave in the name of Jesus Christ and at the count of three any family whether territorially or by whatever connection is tied to the spirit of the grave I'm declaring at the count of three as you shout Jesus the power of God is setting you free one two three the spirit of the grave the spirit of the grave came broseketa nikata. The spirit of the grave, I curse you by the God of heaven. The spirit of the grave, I curse you by the God of heaven. Just follow me this night. Now, I'm praying for all those in front. They came out because the Lord showed something. I declare by the power of God that the legal access of darkness over your life is broken and at the count of three, I speak to these spirits, release everything you have taken from these families. One, two, go, go, go. Out of their lives, out of their destinies. Out of their lives, out of their destinies. I command a release. I command a release. I command a release. Release breakthroughs. Release open doors. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Please just pay attention and let God help you. You came here tonight to receive. Listen to me. The Lord is ministering to me that there are people you dare not go to bed. Someone must come in your sleep and try to sleep with you or it may happen once in a while this is a strange oppression of darkness and i declare i'm praying right now i'm seeing fire all over this place because there are many people that is the root cause of many oppressions in your life at the count of three you will shout that name again that is above every other name and some of you will feel something leaving you immediately i declare that all these spirits that molest the saints and manipulate dreams and visions. At the count of three, let there be emancipation. One, two, get ready. Three. I 
command those spirits. Go now. Strangers of the night. Strangers of the night. Kebrakatakata. Rekatakata. Help that gentleman. Strangers of the night. Reketepe rekata. Embreketeteketekete. Bring them out. Strangers of the night. I curse you by the God of heaven. Molesting the saints. Planting sicknesses in their bodies. Hello, Kim Madonna. a certain family here I'm seeing that they tied the family to the covenant of a stone something that has to do with a stone I don't know what that means and in what tribe but I'm seeing a covenant that has to do with being tied to a stone I don't know if it's for protection or for whatever but in the name of Jesus I'm praying right now by the power of the Holy Spirit that any fraternity with the elements of Christ let it be broken now in the name of Jesus. Help them, please. Let it be broken now in the name of Jesus. Fraternities with stones and elements and strange fires of the night. Be free in the name of Jesus. Be free in the name of Jesus. The mysteries behind the strange hardship of people. The mysteries behind the oppression of people. Oppression of families. Doors, doors are opening. That's what I'm seeing in the spirit. Doors, doors. Some of you will feel fire on your hands. Fire on your hands. Doors are opening, two leaf gates in the spirit, fire on your hand. You will know by the fire that comes to your hand. I'm seeing fire coming on people's hands. That's what I'm seeing in the realm of the spirit. Doors opening, you must testify. Doors opening, doors opening, doors opening. Age long doors, age long doors that have been closed for many years. I'm seeing an angel of the Lord stand just at the back of this young man. Please shift, my friend. These four ladies, one, two, three, four. I'm seeing an anointing on you people. One, two, three, four. I don't know what it is that God is taking out, but I'm seeing like chains being taken from your feet, chains being removed. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare. I saw an angel stand there, chains being taken up from your feet. In the name of Jesus Christ, chains being taken from off your feet. Listen, let me explain something to you. This is not just some disorganized jamboree. God is turning the destinies of men up. You will see people return with testimonies because there are forces. Emmanuel. I'm hearing the name Emmanuel. Who is that? Emmanuel. Please don't make the place rowdy. Emmanuel. We're going to pray for the sick now.
There are four of you I'm seeing here. You have the call of God upon your life, but there are strange altars that are holding you down. In the name of Jesus, I lose you now. I lose you by the force of the Spirit. I lose you. I release your ministry. I lose you. I release your ministry. Hear me, I'm speaking by the Spirit. I lose you. I release your ministry. I stand by this apostolic anointing. I lose you. If I be called of God, I lose you. I lose you from these forces. I lose you from these yokes. In the name of Jesus Christ. There are men that can be alive, let me tell you, but they are dead in the spirit. Emmanuel, I'm praying. We don't have time to minister individuals, individually, but I'm praying for you. The Lord is breaking delay from four of the families with Emmanuel. No, no, once I mention your case, the power of God is coming upon you. You will know it's your case. I stretch my hands now among the Emmanuels and the people delay, delay, delay. There is an anointing coming now. It's crushing that spirit. Just because I'm praying for Emmanuel does not mean it will not come upon you. In the name of Jesus, delay, delay. God is visiting delay. Broken by the spirit of God. Please help them so they don't injure themselves. He came to set the captives free. To set the captives free. Hold on. This young lady, lift your hands. This, this, yes, you. Lift your hands. I'm stretching my hands towards you. I don't know what it is that I saw, but I saw something like smoke. The other one, the smaller one with white. Yes. I just saw something like smoke coming out of you. And the Lord is saying this is oppression for many years. That has something to do with your abdominal region. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare right now by the power of the Holy Spirit, let that oppression go. Let it leave you. Let it go. Let it leave you right now. In the name of Jesus there is a woman, now I'm going to pray for people generally, but I don't know how we'll do this. There is a barren woman in overflow three. Barren woman, trusting God for the fruit of the womb. Please, if, if you can allow the woman to run and come, God is instructing me to lay my hands on her because it's time for her to carry her child. Overflow three, please let her run and come. Ya bone na kao Sujata ne na kao Sir King Salam Sir King Aljana Ya bone na kao Maureen, Maureen, I'm hearing a name, Maureen, 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 what is your name, lift your hands, where are you from, shout Jesus, loud as you can, Jesus, let the power of witchcraft, over your life be broken. My dear, look at me. Look at me. Shout Jesus. I crush that spirit right now in the name of Jesus. And the man you see in your dream, in the name of Jesus, may you never see that man again. Please make sure you, they don't, why is mama here? Is she Maureen? This woman, I, I'll pray for you. That woman. Come, madam. Is that your daughter? Come, madam. Where are you coming from, ma? Let her come. Sir? Where are you coming from? I'm from Area C. Area I'm C? No, I'm, I'm going to pray for you. Mama, you are a sincere woman. But if I did not pray for you, huh? it's a bite that will kill you. 
from the market in an accident. This is what I'm seeing. I'm seeing this woman with a leather of potato and a bike man just comes to jam her together with a truck and they just say survive by that the woman is dead. I'm not a prophet of doom, mama. Please don't be afraid. In the name of Jesus Christ, hold my hands. I extend your life by the power of the Holy Spirit that the plague of death see let me prophesy upon someone here anyone here that the hand of death is upon you to see that you will not see the end of this year i'm praying by the spirit now i'm praying by the spirit and in the name of jesus anyone that the spirit of death is haunting anyone being haunted by the spirit of death i command that it is crushed now in jesus name What is your name, my dear? Maury, come. You will look at a beautiful lady like this, but in the realm of the spirit, I'm seeing a human being, but no face. No face like this. I'm just seeing a blank face like this. Let me tell you what this means. It's a yoke of bad luck that people stand and cannot bless you. You have what it takes to be blessed and rewarded. The lady on yellow, lift your hands. There's the call of God upon your life. There is a prophetic grace that is upon you. And the Lord is saying you are stepping into it right now. I stretch my hands to you. Right now in the name of Jesus. May the Lord bring you into that grace. I'm still praying for her. In the name of Jesus I declare. I'm seeing fire coming upon you right now. And that fire will unlock a dimension of the prophetic. In the name of Jesus Christ. bad luck listen I'm going to hold her but a different person is the one that will receive before I pray for her this is just allow me do my my mad thing hold my hand in the name of Jesus I'm not praying for her I'm praying for someone now by the Spirit of the Lord but the Lord is saying I should hold her as I pray for the person Lord in the name of Jesus this yoke of bad luck I'm speaking now please help them this yoke of bad luck by the power of the Holy Spirit where good things don't seem to happen to you in the name of Jesus let it be broken now 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 now let me pray for you be free by the anointing of the Holy Spirit I take away this that I'm seeing and in the name of Jesus, you have an identity in the spirit that brings honor, that brings grace and dignity. In Jesus' name I pray. Where are these ones? We are going to pray for the sick. Your name is Maureen. Are you married? You are married. Yes, sir. But you don't have a child. Yes, sir. From Overflow 3. Yes, sir. Where's your husband? Not here. It's not, but you're married. Yes, sir. Come and stand here and watch the God of wonders. I don't know you. Madam, from Overflow 3? You are from Overflow 3. You are trusting God for the fruit of the womb. Why did you come? Your name is Maureen. What do you do, madam? Hold on. I'm a businesswoman. You're a businesswoman. Where? I used to sell at uh, young, um, Brandon Kanu, but right now the business is scattered. Do you know why I'm asking you? No. I must pray for you because this thing is not only you there is nobody doing well in your family your entire family this is what I'm seeing is a spirit huh? except you open up something and miss even physical money used to get missing from you you will keep money and count it and found find out that it's not what you kept is that true if I'm lying just say I'm lying where are you from from Enugu Anambra state. I'm seeing the map of Nigeria and I'm seeing the state Anambra. I'm seeing deliverance coming for people from that state now. I'm seeing deliverance coming for people from that state. Anyone, usually when God shows me this, anybody who is from that state connected by blood, the power of God begins to come upon them to bring deliverance. It's a sign and a wonder. I'm declaring right now in the name of Jesus, that anyone who is from that state and that region and there is any force and yoke that is fighting you 
be free right now in the name of Jesus be free in the name of Jesus be free in the name of Jesus please help them be free in the name of Jesus an umbra stage be free in the name of Jesus I'm still seeing the map in my vision be free in the name of Jesus my friend that young man holding his hands shout Jesus from where you are the yoke is broken I cast it out of your life forever in the name of Jesus Christ madam I need to pray for you don't feel bad look at me you insulted a woman some years ago and the woman told you it will not be well with you it was like a joke truly the thing followed you this is what God is showing me now I'm not a prophet of doom I'm going to pray for you I don't know if it, the woman annoyed you or what is it you insulted the woman and she stood and told you that it will not be well because what you were saying about her was not what she did hold my hands the Bible says even the lawful captive shall be delivered let me tell you my brothers and my sisters the scourging tongues of men the scourging tongues of men except you know where you stand a cause causeless shall not stand but if there is a cause it will stand though it will stand are we together now i will pray where are your siblings madam hi this woman no oh. you are not here alone where are the rest call them just stand where you call what is their name educate quickly please and victor educate come and and who victor that is and victor son. Victor is not your brother. Victor is a small boy. Where is he? Let him come. Because I'm seeing the boy. You are saying Victor is a little boy. Uh -uh. Are you married? Yes. You have a son? Yes. Your son's name too is Victor? Yes, he's the one I'm calling. Is the boy that you are talking yes. about? You said your brother. No, AGK is my brother. Let the boy come. As young as that boy is too, if I don't pray for him, he will start stealing. Eh? There are two boys, small boys, that will be delivered from this spirit. No matter where you keep anything, they must steal it. We are not condemning people. I hope you understand what I'm saying here. God is delivering people. To the pure, all things are pure. Nobody is calling any family a bad family. But this is a place where God is visiting people. Where is the person, please? Come, celebrate him as he comes. You're welcome, sir. I will pray for you. God is going to turn your family around. This is the little boy. My friend, how are you? Come. How old are you? 11 years old. You love Jesus? Yes, sir. I will pray for you. How can a nice boy like this, and the next thing, start picking things? Do you know, let me tell you, these small children that steal are not thieves. It's just that either by carelessness or lack of discernment, it was not dealt with. Because most of what they steal, they don't need it. That's how you know it's a spirit. Are we together? Yes. That's why it's important that parents lay hands on their children and speak and prophesy. Don't assume they will be spiritual by default. My friend, let me pray for you. Father, thank you for this adorable young man. And this guy has a great destiny. You see this boy? I'm looking at a star rising as I'm laying my hands on him. This is what the Lord is showing me. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you. You will be a great man by the power of the Holy Spirit. Hold this woman. The anointing of the Spirit is coming on her. In the name of Jesus Christ. Sir, what do you do? A medical sales representative. You are a medical sales representative. Medical sales representative. Can I pray for you? Yes. You are a sincere person, eh? but this thing, they are just forces that want to destroy your family. I will pray for you. Eh? April, May, June. It will look like you held a charm. The way God will turn your life around. You believe it? In the name of Jesus, may that grace come upon you. Madam, 
come the power of god is coming upon you in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare this thing that i'm seeing tied to your waist i lose it right now by the power of the holy spirit be set free now in the name of jesus christ you are the one trusting god for a child come how long have you been married three years three years yes. no child you too are you married five years four five months. years four months yes. no child no child doctor said after two surgeries they said my husband cannot impregnate me he did surgery twice don't cry jesus is here huh you went through two surgeries where is your husband he's at home, he's at home. don't cry where are you from where are you coming from Graceland. you see th these are the things that sometimes worry my spirit imagine the kind of trouble that this family will go through sometimes we take some things for granted imagine the advices someone now will recommend and say go to a herbalist go and do this and don't cry my sister two surgeries you went through mm. my head now i'm seeing something being removed from your stomach look at what is happening to her yes she went through two surgeries in the name of jesus christ i command that spirit that says your husband cannot impregnate you in the name of jesus i set you free now madam i set you free now i'm praying for the rest but i set you free now hold my hands come in the name of jesus I declare supernatural miracle for you now release this woman now as I'm praying for you I'm praying for your husband wherever he is according to the time of life may you return with your miracle children it's over in the name of Jesus Christ the son of the living God my dear let me why is this woman here you are married to madam no child how long four years and um, five months four years five months where are you coming from Jigawa state from Jigawa state please come oh dear all walk walk for all the stunning streets around God is dealing with these issues because he has declared that it's a year of extraordinary fruitfulness. Is fruitfulness from any dimension. Any dimension. Look at this woman. Look at these women crying. I may never understand what it means for a woman to not be able to take in. I think it's the equivalent of a man not be able to provide for his family. That you come back home and watch your wife and children and they say that they were hungry and you are clueless about where bread will come from my sister please don't cry who brought you here you came alone Sarah. Huh? Sarah. oh dear put your hand on your stomach is she a christian she's, she's a christian yes. okay it doesn't matter whether you are a muslim or christian the lord everybody the lord healed in the old testament he healed them and gave them an opportunity to hand their lives over you just act like this just to show honor and respect people i will pray for you there is a name that is above every other name and in the name of jesus i lay my hands upon your womb and i declare the embargo of barrenness five years barrenness let it be broken right now Look at this let it be broken right now i'm seeing something being loose from your stomach this is what i'm seeing and then i'm seeing you coughing you are now beginning to cough this is what i'm seeing i don't know what it is that i'm seeing but i'm seeing something come out of you and you are coughing coughing something out in the name of jesus christ let it be gone now let it be gone forever let it be gone forever let it be gone forever my dear put your hand on your stomach what's your name blessing where's your husband he's not here he's not here 
Father, in the name of Jesus, I don't care what the medical report is. We agree as a family of faith that this our dear sister carries her miracle child now. I decree and declare according to the time of life, return with your child. Whatever needs to be corrected in this body now, I correct it by the power. Ah, I'm seeing something like fire burning already on your stomach. This is what I'm saying. You will feel it now physically like fire on your stomach. In the name of Jesus Christ, let there be a, look at what is happening to her. A correction, a correction of whatever is wrong. In the name of Jesus. Why are they here? Fruit of the womb. Uh, we are not praying at random. We will pray. Madam, I will pray for you. Where are you coming from? Huh? Nasarawa State. Nasarawa State. Are you alone? No, I mean. You me. came with who? Only me. Only you. Come. Just the woman. I will pray for her. We have to pray for the sick. But how many of you have seen what God is doing here? Listen, you see, if you love the Lord and you see God attacking. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord just showed me something now. I'm seeing the head of a human being on top of something that looks like a shrine on fire. And the Lord is telling me that this is one of the mysteries behind the captivity of many people. I decree in the name of Jesus Christ, Father, whatever has had to do with blood that is responsible for the bewitchment and the plague that comes upon people in the name of Jesus by the mercy of God let there be freedom now let there be freedom now let there be freedom now, there be freedom now. I'm seeing a family of one two three four five six graduates nobody's employed six graduates you are all graduates nobody has a job who is that person six graduates please listen to the instruction so that you don't just jump out six graduates no job not one person has a job i want to pray for you you are the one for the fruit of the womb huh i have to pray for you i'm seeing something in your stomach have you gone to the hospital you've spoken with a doctor don't be embarrassed I'm seeing something growing in your stomach and this is not a baby I will pray for you because if I don't pray for you you will have to go through serious surgery to even allow the baby stay based on what the Lord is showing me and I'm going to pray for you where are you coming from madam Kano. Kano. is your husband here is your husband here yes where is he? Husband, sir, please come. There's Daddy something the Lord wants to do in your family. Don't worry, he's, he's here, he's coming. Thank you, sir. Thank you for coming. God bless you. I want to pray for you. You came from Kano too? You came from Kano too, sir? I'm going to pray for you. Things come out of you. Opportunity to hand their lives, opportunity to hand their lives over. You just act like this just to show honor and respect people. I will pray for you. There is a name that is above every other name and in the name of jesus i lay my hands upon your womb and i declare the embargo of barrenness five years barrenness let it be broken right now look at this let it be broken right now i'm seeing something being loose from your stomach this is what i'm seeing and then i'm seeing you coughing you are now beginning to cough. This is what I'm seeing. I don't know what it is that I'm seeing, but I'm seeing something come out of you and you are coughing, coughing something out. In the name of Jesus Christ, let it be gone now. Let it be gone forever. Let it be gone forever. Let it be gone forever. My dear, put your hand on your stomach. What's your name? Blessing. Blessing. Where's your husband? He's not here. He's not here. Yes. Father, in the name of Jesus, I don't care what the medical report is. We agree as a family of faith that this our dear sister carries her miracle child now. I decree and declare according to the time of life, 
return with your child whatever needs to be corrected in this body now i correct it by the power ah, i'm seeing something like fire burning already on your stomach this is what i'm saying you will feel it now physically like fire on your stomach in the name of jesus christ let there be a look at what is happening to her a correction a correction of whatever is wrong in the name of jesus why are they here fruit of the womb uh, we're not praying at random we'll pray madam i will pray for you where are you coming from huh nasarawa state nasarawa state are you alone no I'm you me. came with who only me only you come just the woman i will pray for her we have to pray for the sick but how many of you have seen what god is doing here listen you see if you love the lord and you see god attacking In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord just showed me something now. I'm seeing the head of a human being on top of something that looks like a shrine on fire. And the Lord is telling me that this is one of the mysteries behind the captivity of many people. I decree in the name of Jesus Christ, Father, whatever has had to do with blood that is responsible for the bewitchment and the plague that comes upon people in the name of jesus by the mercy of god let there be freedom now let there be freedom now let there be freedom now, there freedom now. i'm seeing a family of one two three four five six graduates nobody's employed six graduates you are all graduates nobody has a job who is that person six graduates please listen to the instruction so that you don't just jump out six graduates no job not one person has a job i want to pray for you you are the one for the fruit of the womb huh i have to pray for you i'm seeing something in your stomach have you gone to the hospital you've spoken with a doctor don't be embarrassed I'm seeing something growing in your stomach and this is not a baby I will pray for you because if I don't pray for you you will have to go through serious surgery to even allow the baby stay based on what the Lord is showing me and I'm going to pray for you where are you coming from madam Kano. Kano. is your husband here is your husband here yes where is he? Husband, sir, please come. There's Daddy something the Lord wants to do in your family. Don't worry, he's, he's here, he's coming. Thank you, sir. Thank you for coming. God bless you. I want to pray for you. You came from Kano too? You came from Kano too, sir? I'm going to pray for you. Number one, God is going to give you the fruit of the womb. Number two, God is restoring your finances. You hear what I'm saying? Amen. God is restoring your finances. Amen. This is a serious issue. As you are here coming now, the financial trouble you are into is only God that can bring you out. Amen. Is that true? God is going to help you. Madam, put your hand on your stomach. In the name of Jesus Christ, where are they here? Six graduates, no job. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, by your mercy and by your grace, let there be a sign and a wonder. In the life of this woman just keep her down in the name of Jesus I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit everything that is wrong be corrected now in the name of Jesus sir please can you hold my hands in the name of Jesus I speak over your finances there is a grace that can restore and I release that grace upon you in the name of Jesus Christ madam let me talk to you and then we'll pray for the sick you are the both of you where are you coming from you are here in Zaria Yes. And you are, yes, I know your face. Six graduates, no job. Yes, sir. Including you? Yes, sir. Come. No. But there are Can six people. Now? Yes. But there's no job for yes, them. Yes, sir. Can we agree that God will give them a job? Yes, sir. And you too? Yes, Let's pray. Come. Hold my hands. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, 
there is an anointing that is coming upon you eh? and is for the sake of your family in the name that is above all names i release this grace upon you and i pray let the embargo of joblessness be broken now even on both of you i use you as a point of contact to pray now something is leaving this lady's hand you something is leaving your hand i cost that yoke now in the name of jesus your hand is a symbol of your productivity and i declare in the name of jesus let there be liberty liberty for all of you liberty i open the doors of jobs in jesus name i pray why is he here you are a graduate six from where please from abuja abuja yes you are a school of ministry student madam let me talk to you where are you coming from Natural State. Yes, sir. Are you married? Bring the person that begins to laugh in the spirit. The hand of God is coming upon someone. Bible says the shouts of joy and victory will not depart from the tents of the righteous. Please bring the person. Let's save time. Father, I establish this victory over this lady's life. The oppression over your life and your family is broken now and broken forever. Broken now and broken forever ah, we don't have time our time is gone but the Lord is showing me a very serious vision of a lady that entered a relationship with a gentleman and left him and the guy vowed I'm seeing this guy carry not you now I'm seeing this guy carry a photo and taking it to a herbalist in Kaduna State Hello, Kim Matona. Hello, Kim Matona. whose name has been taken for any diabolic activity. I stand by the hand of God. Whoever took it there, judgment comes on them now. Whoever took it there, judgment comes on them now. Whoever took it there, judgment comes on them now. Whoever took it there, judgment comes on them now. I'm still praying. Whoever took it there, judgment comes on them now. This is what the Lord showed me. Carry the name of the lady and kept it there. That number one, no decent man will ever come and ask her out. And number two, she will never give birth. This is what I'm seeing. Who shall say a thing and it will come to pass? That when God has not declared it so. I reverse every pronouncement over anyone here in the name of Jesus. I want to pray a prayer. Please forgive me for tonight's miracle service the way God is taking us I want to pray Shade and doctor please come the Lord wants to end an old issue in your family please come this is what the Lord is showing me this thing I'm seeing is as old as more than 60 70 years the Lord is opening my eyes to see now please I want to pray for you those under the anointing help me please i'm just using two of you as a point of contact but i'm seeing a spirit this is an ancient spirit 
the way this thing works is that men rise the moment they get to the zenith of anything they are doing they must die this is the spirit i'm seeing please listen i'm not i'm just using them and i'm ministering the way god is showing me these are not the only families with this thing but the lord is saying i should deal with it now provided you have not gotten to the pinnacle you know death will touch you but the moment you touch that bar you are going down and the lord wants to destroy it because god is using both of you to start a new program in the family i will follow the lion i will follow the lamb I will follow the lion. I will follow the lamb. I believe in the lion. I believe in the lion. I believe in the lamb. Bring that little girl, as small as that girl you see is. This girl you are seeing is a deliverer of her family. As small as you are seeing this this little girl. Because this girl stands as an altar of righteousness over her family. And as small as she is, the devil wants to kill her. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare, I use this, my dear daughter, as a point of contact. That everything that is not the planting of God, I scatter it now in the name of Jesus. May God use this, our precious daughter. And truly may she be the deliverer of her family. In the name of Jesus. A lady is going to start running because I'm about to pray over a spirit that is in her family. And that spirit is going to start driving her to run away. So I'm telling you in advance, you are going to see the person stand up to start running away. It's, it's not even this lady I'm talking about. This is somebody in the crowd. You will not even you will not be in control of yourself it's a spirit because i'm about to rebuke it right now father i thank you for the bonire family and by extension the various families the altar that sits upon this family even the lawful captives shall be delivered even the lawful captives i break that yoke now i stand by the rod of a higher priesthood that ancient yoke that brings down great men over this family be broken i open up the door of increase rise to the senate of your profession i forbid the spirit of death once and for all In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, an issue that is age long. Let me tell you this a mighty deliverance has happened to this family. This thing I'm telling you fought their grandparents, fought their parents, and if not delivered now, will still fight them. If there's anyone here that this same spirit works in your family, you rise to a position and crash down. In the name of Jesus, at the count of three, let fire land upon such individuals and scatter that altar, scatter that altar forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. It took words to establish the covenant that brought this family in trouble. Now I declare to you, a new order starts in your lineage. A new order starts in your family. Where children live long and they become successful. And that every embargo of witchcraft, once and for all, is broken in the name of Jesus. Madam, I can pray for you now. Where did you say you are from? Nasarawa just, just keep her somewhere there or bring a chair and keep her. You are not from Nasarawa State. You stay in Nasarawa State. Yes, Where are you from? Ebony State. Ebony State. Ebony State. 
I want to pray for you. Am I wasting your time, please? One encounter with the power of God is enough to turn your life around. My friend, this man wearing um, you, yes. Did you come alone? Who did you come with? Where is your wife? Come. It's time for God to change your life. Stand up, stand up. Please stand up, stand up. Where are you coming from? From campus, yes, sir. You are from campus, yes, here. sir. What do you do? I'm a lecturer in the university. You are a lecturer. Yes, sir. I want to pray for you. Ah. Sir, you are not supposed to be at this level now. You are a very brilliant man, you, but there, you are intelligent. I don't know you, all, but you are a brilliant man. It even took grace for you to be given a lecturing job. Yes, it's because there is no way they could deny you. Yes, you were too exceptional. Yes, and you are supposed to be abroad now. Yes, I don't know what has kept yes, you down. Sir. This is what I'm seeing in the spirit. You are not supposed to be here, yes, sir. Yes, but sir. somebody carried your issue and put it under the table. You see, you see what we are talking about that you carry a man's destiny see let me say it i'm praying to you from my heart that in the name of jesus whatever belongs to you and has been hijacked by the wicked hearts of men it must be released this night it must be released this night sir please stand up what's your department sorry sir Political science, can I pray for you? Yes, sir. You will know that there is a God in heaven. Amen. What do you do, my dear? I'm not doing anything. You are not doing anything? No, sir. Ah, I have to pray for you. Yes, sir. Ah, that trip abroad, you must go. Amen. Amen. Because there is an honor and there is a professor that God has destined that you will meet. Amen. And I'm going to pray. Do you believe what I'm saying? Yes, sir. In the name of Jesus Christ, sir, I pray for you. By the power of the Holy Spirit, I release you. And I release your destiny. Amen. Both for you and your wife. Amen. I decree and declare. Scale new heights in your profession. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Number two. There is a friend in your life. And the Lord is telling me to tell you to be careful. There is a friend in your life. Be careful. I won't say more than that. Be careful. What God has joined, let no man put asunder. I'll stop there. In the name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord honor you. In Jesus' name. Madam, you have been here for a while. Let's pray. What are you trusting God for? For marriage. Who came from Joss? Joss. Joss. Where did you come from? Madam, where did you come from? Focus. Huh? Focus. From Joss. Not state of origin where you came from, that you left it and came. Huh? I want to pray for you. What do you do? I, I, I'm a secretary. You are what? I'm a secretary. You are a secretary? Yes, sir. Come, let me pray for you. One of these days, we'll just trust God and do a night vigil, honestly, so that we can deal with this issue seriously. You may think that time is being wasted until you see what God is turning around in your life. All these people came from Joss? Madam, say in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I will not have what they call that pregnancy, that they'll have to do, um, no, bridge is bridge or something like that. This is what I'm saying. All done. Let me pray for you. Come. You are sick. It looks like pregnancy. Like it's breached. This is what I'm saying. The pregnancy that looks like it's that will open you up and carry something out. Where are you coming from? Josh. What did they say is wrong with you? Um, multiple fibrosis. No. A man, don't feel embarrassed. Can I talk to you? A man used to come in a dream. Huh? and sleep with you yes, is that true yes, that's what brought this pregnancy i'm a man of god don't be af afraid you you heard the story i told you now yes, sir. Yes, madam if i'm lying look at me before the whole world and say i'm a liar that you go to bed and a man comes 
and all of a sudden this started coming of course medically you would think that okay you check it there is nothing there yet the pregnancy will not go how long has this thing been three years three years Don't cry. Don't cry. Who did you come with? May this place remain a place of solutions. Was it not the fallen angels that met with the daughters of men and they became pregnant physically? and had strange go and listen to my teaching the mystery of the serpent and the woman my sister can i pray for you you believe in jesus look at this adorable lady look at imagine a woman carrying this for three years is that pregnancy a, does a human being stay three years in the stomach are you married of course imagine what this this means to her marital life. Put your hand there. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Look at this. Look at what is happening to the woman. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare that every seed that has not been planted by God, let it be uprooted in this body. Is it not written that every tree that has not been planted by my father, it must be uprooted? I uproot this right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I uproot this right now. In the name of Jesus. By a strange mystery, may this thing begin to go down and disappear from this woman's body. In the name of Jesus Christ. Just keep her down there. Madam, let me pray for you. What do you want the Lord to do for you? I'm believing him for a life partner. Life partner. Do you believe God can give you a life partner? Yes, sir. Do you love Jesus? I love Jesus. You are born again. Yes. Father, the Bible says male and female, he created them. She's not embarrassed. She's standing sincerely and telling you that I came so that God will bless me with a life partner. I lay my hands upon you and I decree and declare may god bring a responsible man to your life Amen. you will not marry a man that will make your yesterday better than your tomorrow Amen. in the name of jesus christ i declare it so and for all these people standing i pray for them may the lord himself bring miracles over their life Amen. in jesus name i pray i may not have time to minister to all of you one by one please forgive me huh coincidentally i'm going to just tomorrow I'll be in just Saturday, Sunday. I'm ministering in a conference. I'm excited. I'll be in House on the Rock at Rayfield, Saturday and Sunday. I'm in just. But let me pray for you, all of you who came all the way. My dear, look at me. You love Jesus? Yes, sir. With all your heart? Yes, sir. I drive the boy that the devil wants to bring to your life. Say amen. Amen! You, you may not understand what I'm saying, but let me repeat myself. I drive, I didn't say God drove him, in the name of Jesus Christ, as one who loves you, eh? I drive any irresponsible boy that is coming in the name of prayer warrior to destroy your life. Amen! In the name of Jesus. I'm amen. not looking down. It is God's will that all men be saved. But then I'm telling you that in the name of Jesus Christ, everything that would destroy your destiny, let it be far from you. Amen. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise the Lord. For all of you, I may not know why you came, but let me pray for you. In the name of Jesus, return with your testimonies. In the name of Jesus, return with your testimonies. In the name, just believe what I'm praying for you. In the name of Jesus, return with your testimonies. God bless you. Please go back to your seat, my God. Can we still pray for the sick? How many of you are trusting God for healing? Let me see your hands. Oh dear. Okay, this is what is going to happen. 
it's okay I'm, I'm going to pray for you 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 came you brought them okay I'm going to pray for you now you just relax now please because of time those under the anointing just leave them if there's no usher hold on a lady usher place your hand on that girl any lady usher release her now out in the name of Jesus let it come to an end now and forever release her destiny release her family in the name of Jesus Christ let there be restoration and let there be testimonies please this is how we are going to do it because our time is already gone we are going to do three things at the same time please listen number one you are going to be submitting your prayer requests number two those who are trusting God for healing in the various overflows please aside from those that I prayed for for barrenness if your reason of coming here is barrenness whether you are in overflow one two or three I want you to come to overflow one I want to pray for you myself aside from that please you are trusting God for a healing miracle I want you to move to your various overflows so those at overflow one move to the front of your projector stand overflow two the same thing overflow three the same thing those by the roadside the roadside down to second equa join overflow two you can join overflow two please ushers protocol PR department coordinate yourself to help them please so that the people know what they are doing praise the Lord those in here you can come you can come the Lord bless you now there are going to be men and women of God scattered across these various places who are ministering under a corporate anointing make sure you are standing for healing please make sure you are standing for healing no 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 those for fruit of the womb come in please the main auditorium I want to lay hands on you by myself it doesn't matter what overflow you are if it is fruit of the womb please come the main auditorium I want to pray for you now please listen just a touch is enough you don't have to start explaining and telling the men of God this is a problem sometimes God can give them words if they don't don't worry just a touch and you will go back I want you to believe this that's why you came are we together while that is happening if you have your prayer request here you can just wave it and pass it let there be an usher okay um, peace is here you can pass it let there be an usher or somebody please um, the various departments coordinate yourself so that you are collecting this let's make it fast those online um, you can use our social media platforms to submit your requests and we're going to pray on it right now please quickly quickly A Jimmy and a Jimmy and promise will go to overflow one a Jimmy and promise will go to overflow one um, pastor Alpha and Benga will go to overflow three overflow three pastor Femi and Kenny and Ima go to overflow two also extend to those by the roadside extend to those by the roadside did you get let me pray for you pastor Lawrence come I will pray for you and then you will join those at overflow three in the name of Jesus Christ grace for you by the power of the Holy Spirit let the anointing let the grace of the spirit come upon you in the name of jesus christ amen and amen now please worship team you give us songs of the spirit while we are ministering and as soon as hands are laid on you you can go back rejoicing those who are seated don't be careless be praying in the spirit because god is solving people's problems while you gather the prayer requests if you are yet to submit yours just wave it and there will be someone to reach you in the name of jesus father we decree and declare
that within the next 10 or so minutes that we have, do a quick walk in the life of your people. In the name of Jesus, do a quick walk in the life of your people. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Someone will fall under the anointing here. Once that happens, the power of God will start moving to heal. Right here, those in front here. Okay, so I can start praying now. In the name of Jesus, be healed. In the name of Jesus Christ, be healed. Praise the Lord. Please, everyone stand. Say after me, in the name of Jesus. Whether you are inside or outside, say in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare that the next dimension of my life opens up now. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Please begin to pray. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'd like you to begin to declare that every request you have written here, that by the grace of God, this will be the last time you have to visit this issue. Please pray. Please pray. Our time is gone, but let's make use of the time. stretch your hands here and begin to decree and declare that in the name of Jesus Christ the son of the living God every request that I've written here by the God of heaven let this be the last time may the Lord arise and solve impossible situations arise in the name of Jesus are you praying father that these Egyptians that I see today I see them no more forever the requests of those localized here and those who have posted their requests on our social media platforms we declare intervention we declare breakthrough we declare increase Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ, we declare and we agree as a family of faith that this request will
turn into testimonies in your life. We declare that these requests turn into supernatural testimonies. The same way I am standing upon them, I decree you stand upon every situation that is represented here in the name of Jesus Christ. I know that they are still praying for a few people, but let me just pray the final prophetic blessing on you because our time is gone. It says, the sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. I decree and declare, every economic hardship that is bringing the saints to their knees and causing them to compromise, I declare that you are exempted from it now. Every prayerlessness represented in this place that the grace to pray seems to have gone down in the name of Jesus fresh fire upon your altar fresh fire upon your altar anybody introduced by the devil into your life or your circle to destroy you I sever you from them right now in Jesus' name. I speak favor over your life. And I declare in the name of Jesus, walk in favor. 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 In favor. Therefore, God has exalted him and given him a name that is above every other name. It says that at the mention of that name, every knee must bow. I declare, whatever must bow in your life from tonight, let it bow right now. Let me pray for you finally, and especially for those of us who are not within this city. If you traveled far and came, I'm praying for you now. In the name that is above all names, to all our visitors and all those who connect with us from far, that includes those from our social media platforms, I decree and declare, whatever the issue of concern is that brought you here, return with the answers now. Return with the answers now. You will not need to tell people you came here. There will be the radiance and the glory of the Spirit upon your life. I declare that every door that has refused to open, even as the Lord kept revealing here, I enforce it and we call that door open now. The new month is the fourth month of the year. The number four stands for balance. That means that whatever is left that must be shown in your life, you are blessed here but not yet blessed here. You are blessed here but not yet blessed here. I declare completion for you now. May April bring you completion. In the name of Jesus Christ. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Alaska de Basca Nakata Branda Katekatos, Kate Branda Katapa Kotosko to break a take and Nakata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.